Woo! Man, what a busy day for me. So busy. Uh, if you take a look at the sidewall over here, what's this? All the books gone. We just got one little pile of energy cards on the side. How nice is that? Somebody keeps buying up all the book. There's a guy who's been, uh, I guess he's been getting a good price on it though. Maybe that's why it's been selling so fast. Yeah, we're just trying to get rid of it now because if we're going to, if we're going to move, we're not going to want to move a bunch of bulk cards because that will be a waste of time and money. So I got to liquidate all that bulk. What's up, guys? So I did get an order of Matchless Fighter in today. It's a little bit cheaper. And we'll, we'll test the water and see what the interest in them are. If it's pretty low, we'll drop it further. Uh, honestly, I did not get that much more. Uh, I, I didn't expect the first order to sell out as fast as it did, but it did. It sold incredibly fast. So this second order is a smaller order. Uh, and we have a third order coming, and I think the third order will really shore things up. So let me put those away. Uh, breakthrough, that's right, we, we offer Breakthrough now. Just for a limited time when it sells out, I might not offer it anymore. Shining Fates, as usual, this is probably the most cost-effective set to be opening at the moment, is Shining Fates. Champion's Path. When we run out of Champion's Path, I probably won't offer Champion's Path anymore. We'll have our custom Champion's Path boxes. Pull that out. Let's put the Shining Fates in here instead. Evolutions. Also one of my top card sets for value. Evolutions gives you a chance for five different Charizards and maybe a PSA 10 of a certain hollow Charizard, which would go for an insane amount of money if you pulled them. Okay, so Evolutions is still one of my top ranked sets. How's it going, guys? Happy, what's the day? Happy Wednesday night. Is it Wednesday night? Yep, Thursday morning, Wednesday night. It is the late night Pokey stream, and we're ready to open up a bazillion Pokemon cards. Where's everyone? What's up, Gustavo? Did I advertise it? I can't remember if I, did I ping the Discords? I think I did. I sure did. <clears throat> you know, it's the middle of the week. This is typically the slowest time of the week for me. So I'm curious to see how busy we are tonight. Mr. Alex, what's up, Alex? Happy Christmas. Oh, thanks, man. Kyle Sexton, how's it going? Hi, mister. What happened to Ultra Prism? It's all sold out, Mr. Roxas. We have more Ultra Prism on the way. Well, I didn't expect it to sell so fast. Uh, I think yesterday night, Mr. Christopher Martinez and his uh, girlfriend or fiance, Victoria Bishop, they were going hard on Ultra Prism. And so a few other people kind of tagged along, and they were also trying to snipe out a lily in the Ultra Prism, both of them. So, yeah, just all of it sold out because uh, unusual demand. I try not to overstock on any set, uh, any particular set, unless I really believe it's especially valuable. Now, you guys might be interested if you didn't watch my TikToks. I pulled a lily yesterday. That's because I opened up the base set packs. And I just got a bunch more of the base set packs, so I'm very well stocked on base set. Here they are. Base set. They contain this lily card, among other nice-looking cards. Okay. So I just wanted to point that out, because they were chasing a lily in the Ultra Prism set. And some of you might be interested in the lily card as well. It's a pretty fantabulous card. I don't know what it goes for. Actually, you know, I'm curious. What does it go for? I haven't looked it up in a long time. It's been a while. Kitty's over here needing the pillow. Let's see. We're going to look up Lily. PSA 10. We'll type in base. That should do it. All right. We'll go by lowest price. It looks like she goes for $450. Wow, that's pretty good. Wow, that's a lot better than I thought. I was I was figuring maybe like $250. 400 450 huh? We got fresh custom boosters. Mr. Juan Garcia and everyone else was going crazy on these. So we've got some fresh custom boosters ready to go. Mr. Juan Garcia had a crazy night yesterday. He opened uh, two boxes, a box of Battle Styles and a box of Matchless Fighter that he pulled out of the live custom boosters. Really surprising. What else happened? Um, Let's see. My wife and I are still working on getting moved. We we're doing a bunch of paperwork today. And we had to drive off to the bank, and we got to go to the bank tomorrow as well. Um, anything else interesting that's happening? You know what? I've been watching, I've been watching 1980s. The Price Is Right. Did you know you could watch that on YouTube? 
There's whole episodes of Price of Right, Price is Right on YouTube from the 1980s, and it is such an insane time capsule of that era because you're looking at products from the 80s, and you learn so much like the whole like style and aesthetic and and maybe a little bit of the culture back then, and the, the uh, episodes include the commercials from that time period, and it's so crazy. We watched one. For, we watched The Price Is Right from the 1970s. It's the same deal. They had like their own specific feeling, and uh, you know, it made me want to compare it to the feeling of today. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the comparison. I was like, wow, the 70s and the 80s seemed nicer. They just seemed happier. You know, maybe a little less depressed, maybe a little less anxious, maybe a little less um, contentious or something. I'm not quite sure what the word would be. Maybe a little less. Uh, maybe uh, what's the word? not annoyed, outraged, maybe a little less outraged. I think that's the word. Everybody's outraged. Everyone's looking to be angry over something. Um, and I'm, I think I play into that a little bit myself too. But yeah, I watched it and every, it just seemed like a simpler time. It seemed like the people were happier. The commercials were so different back then. The commercials from the 70s and the 80s, it would be like, look at this. We, we, uh, it would be like, uh, Mrs. Bakersfield or something like that or whatever. No, Betty Crocker, Betty Crocker. Look at this. We put a cake in a box and it's like, that's supposed to be revolutionary technology for like the seventies and the eighties. You can just buy this box and, and make a cake from it. It's like, wow. <laughs> there was a lot of concern over food. Most of the commercials were just food. That was it. Most of the commercials were food. Uh, but because they had nothing else to advertise. They didn't have a bunch of competing musical artists. They didn't have a bunch of movies coming out, as far as I know. Uh, there were no movie commercials at all. There was no, like, you know, there were no commercials for uh, the current cartoons we have. We have cartoons that are so uh, irreverent, you know, like Rick and Morty, Family Guy, maybe The Simpsons. I didn't see any Simpsons commercials, although I, I can't remember when The Simpsons started. They, they started in the 80s, didn't they, The Simpsons? But I didn't see any Simpsons commercials. There were no commercials for South Park. There were no, no, nothing was irreverent at all. It was so different. What a different era. The 80s. The 80s and then the 70s before them, huh? So weird. You should definitely take a minute and, and watch some commercials or, or a TV show from the 70s and the 80s. And actually, I think The Price is Right is a pretty good one. Because again, The Price is Right itself is all about products. And you just see what people had back then. It was so different. Simpsons was 1989. That's right. So the episodes I were watching of The Price is Right were from like 1981, 1984. So really, really old ones. There was no Simpsons. And everyone just seemed nicer. Isn't that weird? It just seemed like everyone was more charming or maybe innocent. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah. Nobody was terribly clever or woke or whatever. Uh, and... They just seemed like people. So we've been watching those for fun. You know, when we stop and have our meals, we'll watch like a Price is Right from the 1980s, 1970s. And it's like a time capsule. I, I recommend it. I highly recommend it. It's definitely like a time capsule. All right, let's see. Oh, James Gore says, remember blockbuster commercials. Mr. James, you know what we did? My wife and I, after watching a number of these Price is Right episodes, we finally turned on commercials from the 2000s. We got like Shrek, we got Austin Powers. We got um, Blockbuster. Blockbuster. We just watched a commercial from Blockbuster where they're like, we're getting rid of late fees, right? And all I was thinking in my head was, it's over for you, Blockbuster. They didn't know it at the time, but they're going to get crushed by Netflix. And they could have easily have purchased Netflix, and it could have been theirs. They miss out on that. It's terrible business decisions. And that's what happens, you know, people make the wrong decisions and it destroys them. And you could say that's true for the political environment too. Our, our leaders are always making decisions and could be the decision that destroys you. So Blockbuster went bye-bye and it was very nostalgic watching that uh, Blockbuster commercial and thinking about how times change, you know. Things are really, really different now. Let's log in and see if anyone wants to open some pokies. Yeah, that's right. Blockbuster not buying Netflix. What were they thinking? Well, they just didn't know. They didn't know that they were behind the times. They couldn't have... And now Netflix is like one of the most valuable tech companies out there. There's there's not a lot better than Netflix. Is this looking okay? That looks okay. Try to get things set, centered up. What did you think about uh, Biden's interview? The one that occurred a few days ago? Um, you know, he seems to have the same speech impediments that he did 
throughout the campaign. And I think that the truth is he's just gotten really old. Uh, and we should have younger leaders, whether it's a Democrat leader or a conservative leader. They should sound young and witty and clever and really have a sharp mind. And if you watch some of Joe Biden's older interviews, he talks kind of the way I'm talking right now, very coherently, very quickly, uh, and like he understands what he wants to say. But if you watch him in an interview today, he can barely speak in a full sentence without, you know, well, I, I guess what I mean to say is he'll have these major breakdowns of what he's trying to say as if he's completely forgotten where he was and what he was talking about. It looks like early stages of dementia. That's what it looks like. And he didn't talk that way in the past. So I think that he won as a candidate because people dislike Donald Trump that much, which I can understand that if that's how people felt. But he's just not a good, you know what I mean? Like from the, from the perspective of a Democrat, he's not like a first choice. You know what I mean? Uh, Bernie Sanders spoke more eloquently than, than Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders could actually speak and not, not like uh, completely lose his train of thoughts in the middle of a speech. So, but he lost. They had, uh, yeah, they had other candidates. Pete Booty, Booty Egg. Hope he doesn't press the red button. I don't think he will. I don't think they'll let him do that. All right, let's go ahead and see if there's a list. How was my day? My day was pretty good. It was a pretty good day. Just a busy day. All right, Kitty, let's see what's going on. So, Aiden, oh, this is Aiden ordering some ETB sleeves. We already took care of that. Louis Barrera, one match list. Thanks, mister. You got it, Louis Barrera. I like to say Louis, like you're in the Italian mafia in New York. It's Louis. Snip. Growing up, one of my best friends, his name was actually Lewis. Yep. His name was Lewis Hannigan. He moved to Texas. So now I never see him. Ah! Oh, Arkazolt. Is it Arkazolt or Arkazolt? Place him here. Very nice, mister. All right. I suppose I do need a... Oops. I suppose I do need an area for bulk to go, don't I? So we're going to generate new bulk for tonight. And we'll place it right here. Cool. Cool. Manchurian Candidate. What? Oh, oh. All right. I've got too much breakthrough on the table. Let me try and get some of this off the table. Or, you know what? I'll place it right here. Problem solved. We just got a lot of breakthrough. It's a very cool set. What do you think about Chilling Rain? Uh, it's great. Dracozole, Arcozole is the middle evolution between him and Arctivish Mister. So you're saying this is Drac... Draco, let's see, Dracozolt, Dracozolt. You got it, mister. I'm going to call him Dracozolt. I'm going to trust you on that, okay? Dracozolt. Oh, is that that? This is that Equinox song already, huh? Found the lady stalking breakpoint at Family Dollar today. Oh, <laughs> woo, score. <laughs> lady, step aside and let me have all of your Pokemon cards in your cart. You don't even need to stock them. You can just dump them right here. So Mr. Lewis, he doesn't say he's already got a bag. Lewis Barrera. I have a Lewis Rodriguez. I'm going to go ahead and create a new bag for you, okay, Lewis? When you guys order, it's always helpful to let me know the status of your bag. Do you have one? Is it in the overflow? Is it a really big bag? Where is it? Is it on the table? Mister, you just got coconut mauled. Coconut mauled? What? Louis Barrera. I was watching some old Looney Tunes, and they doing stuff that would get them canceled instantly, like shooting Indians and black people. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting how... Uh, Everything has become a, a topic of um, grievance, I suppose. Everything's a grievance. Everything is. And there has to be a point where it goes too far. Now, I don't want to say what's too far because I don't want to speak for other people. Uh, but, you know, uh, if, if they were making fun of me because I'm kind of whitish, I just it, – it's not a big deal. You, there, there has to be a point where you can tease each other 
and be okay with it because how are you going to be friends if you can't rip on each other, you know? Isn't that true amongst friends? If you have a good friend, one of the ways you can tell you're a good friend with somebody is you can just tell them uh, maybe a, a joke that's a little bit cruder or you can be a little mean to them and they don't they don't offend to it too quickly and they, they'll do it back to you. They'll jab back at you. That's exactly what close friends of mine would be like. And if it was the other way around, if you had to speak, if, if you had a, an acquaintance and you had to speak to them as if you were in a corporate meeting and anything you say is going to get you fired or sued and don't tell them what you're really thinking, don't share anything like that, don't tease them, don't jab at them, you just wouldn't be friends. That's how it works. So there, there has to be a point where, uh, I, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of correcting going on, in my opinion, in the last 10 years, a lot of correcting but there's a point where it's like we have to return to being able to get along with each other or not overcorrecting. Maybe that's the other word. You know what I mean? So, again, watching those 1980s Price is Right TV shows is so weird. It's, it's definitely like a time capsule. And it's not, as, it's not as terrible as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be horrible. The people back then actually did seem a lot happier. And maybe that's because I was watching Price is Right where people are winning stuff. But even the, just the commercials, uh, the people seemed so much more wholesome. It's hard to describe. More innocent, maybe more family-oriented. Is it fair to say we're not that family-oriented that much anymore? Um, do you remember eventually in like the 90s and the 2010s, you got like the occult and the goth kids start coming out? None of that existed yet in the 80s. That was all, it was all gone. It was just the nuclear family and people were chill and whatever. Yeah, like cassette players, uh, Michael Jackson music, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, it was it was such a different time. And I watched it and I, I almost yearned for it. It's like, wow, I wish we could have that feeling today. And we just don't. Today it's anxiety and depression and boys hate girls and girls hate boys. And uh, let's fight over abortion. And oh, I, it's my money and I need it now. You know, but we feel that way about everything. And it, it's, it's almost sickly. It's a little too bad. Mr. Alex PSX says five shiny stars. You got it, Alex. Mr. Alex. Definitely, I noticed the family orientation more than anything else. Back then, it seemed like families were more important and more the central idea of the consumer. I don't think we have that anymore. The consumer must have been concerned about their family. It just doesn't seem like that's what we care about anymore. You know what I think we care about today uh, is about maybe a little bit like being an e-celebrity, being famous, getting lots of likes, getting lots of attention online. And it almost seems like that's the focus of everything today, right? Everything's focused on becoming famous on the internet or watching content that was made by somebody on the internet. I don't know. Everything's different now. Imagine if we still lived in a world without cell phones and we all socialized a lot better. That was another thing, Jay. You know, a lot of the people that were on the show, they had a certain air about them that I actually recognized in my parents. My parents were this way. Uh, there was a certain almost like self-confidence or social adjustment that I feel people don't have anymore. You have people who are poorly socially adjusted and then people that just hate other people. You know, they just want to withdraw from society at this point. And the people that you would watch on The Price is Right, they didn't have that air about them. They, they, they sounded and they spoke like they were confident and uh, almost like they were just hanging out and, and being fine. Everything's fine. You're fine. I'm fine. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, it, it just doesn't feel like we have that anymore. It, it's almost like we don't want that anymore. You know what I mean? Do you guys remember, did you guys watch that TikTok? It went viral for just a day or so. And that's how things go on TikTok. And it was about a girl who self-diagnosed herself with autism. She's like, yeah, I'm autistic. And, you know, I, I thought that was so bizarre. And of course, a lot of people must have thought the same thing because uh, that's why it went viral. But what's so weird about it, if you if you take a step back, it's this person trying to be labeled that way and it's almost like is this part of the sort of hyper competitive race to be different from everyone else 
you know what I mean? So it, it was it was weird to, to watch. And the people who were on the Price is Right show in the 1980s, they were so normal. They were so normal. They were all very normal. They all acted normal, sounded normal. Nothing about them was particularly strange. Oh, what a nice pack. Look at that. Crobat and Reshiram. That's great. And she did it to get on SSI. Really? I didn't, I didn't think about that. Whew. Where are the thick women at? Oh, right. That's another interesting thing. Everyone was in shape. <laughs> uh, I, you know, there would be like an maybe somebody who was a grandma or grandpa age who was clearly past their 50s and they would be kind of out of shape. Kind of out of shape. There were no obese people at all. You'd look into the audience. Everyone was thin. And that's because it was the 1980s. There was hardly any junk food. Uh, mom was still staying at home and cooking meals every night for the family. Now, I'm not saying women should be stuck in the kitchen. My own wife doesn't do that. She doesn't cook. She, she works. But I'm saying there's a sort of lost maybe like art to having somebody in your family who's cooking healthy meals every day. And we are, we're caring a lot about having our girlfriends and wives cooking or whatever, neither of us want to cook. But you've really lost something when nobody cooks in the family. You've lost a certain healthy aspect of your life. And so these people, they went outside. They didn't play video games all day. They didn't watch, you know, animus all day with the anime, animu girl dolls on your table or your desk or whatever the problem is. Uh, they went outside and worked outside and then they went home to a home-cooked meal from mom. You know what I mean? Mom cooked a home-cooked meal. Maybe like a roast with like potatoes and broccoli. I don't know. But you didn't go to Taco Bell. You didn't go to uh, Chick-fil-A, which I don't even think existed back then. I don't know. But you probably didn't go out to eat that much at all. So it, it was interesting. Everyone back then was so thin. They were all in shape and we're all so fat now. It's so easy because there's so much content, which, by the way, you're watching content right now. But there was so much content uh, that didn't exist back then that exists today. And so now you just kind of play video games and watch YouTube and get back to playing video games or watch some YouTube, go to work. You got a job sitting down. I got a job sitting down. So it's, it's really interesting. And uh, it's a really serious problem. Obesity, it should be like the biggest issue that we tackle over the next 10 years. A, a humans should solve the problem of obesity right away because there's no way we're outliving our grandparents when we're all so big, you know? Clogged arteries, high blood pressure. It's funny because they probably gonna outlive us with less medical skill than we have today. We probably have more advanced medical technology and we're still gonna live shorter lives than them because we are so addicted to our electronic devices and living totally sedentary lifestyles and then eating some of the the worst food the most decadent food that's ever existed i love obese women where are they at well i i love them too but but i want everyone to live nice long lives too samuel agueo he says 10 matchless fighters you got it mr sam let's do it sam one two three four five six seven I'm listening to Mr. Wall eating ice cream. <laughs> well, and, and maybe they ate that way too back then. But I think the other thing that was true was they just went outside more. So it's the combination of being sedentary and just having so much cheap, cheap junk food that's getting us. You know what I mean? It's the combination. Back then they probably had ice cream, but they probably went outside later. They probably didn't have air conditioning all the time. Uh, they probably had more outdoor jobs because there were no technology jobs yet there weren't a lot of technology jobs back then now everyone's working in technology we're all sitting at desks so yeah it's very interesting and they looked happier they looked happier you know when people talk about feeling depressed and feeling anxious you know what might make you feel depressed and anxious just being out of shape could make you feel depressed and anxious. You don't look as attractive as you once were. Uh, you don't feel as attractive. And there's probably all kinds of health problems associated, you know, with reaching obesity. 
And they didn't have any of that back then. So few of them were obese. They were all thin. Of course, they were less depressed and less anxious. So they're all thinner and more attractive and hanging out with each other. They're actually hanging out. They're actually having real human to human experiences, not not human to technology experiences like what we're having here. So yeah, this whole conversation is about watching The Price is Right from the 80s on YouTube. Go watch it. Take a minute and watch an episode of that. They're like an hour long. Watch the commercials. The commercials themselves are nice to watch. It's almost like, wow, the commercials were so normal back then. Is this a human to human experience? It's not. It's a human to technological experience. We're talking over a screen. So you guys will have to see me in real person uh, for it to be face to face. So Mr. Sam, let's find your bag. Mr. Sam, now I love YouTube. I love good content. And I'm not saying we need to become cavemen again. That's not what I'm saying. But man, humans need a technological solution to being out of shape, we really do. And I don't know what it is, no clue. Alex says three more. 10 matchless fighters. How did I say seven? I said seven, didn't I? Let's get you three more, mister. <laughs> so weird. Maybe I'm having early onset dementia. <laughs> All right, here we go, Mr. Sam. Three more packs. Let's get you the hot ones. Rashab says, I watched your replay of yesterday's stream and was shocked when I heard U.S. citizens don't need voter ID to vote. That's weird. Now, that's not necessarily true. In some places, you do have to have voter ID. And in other places, they're trying to get rid of it. And the group that is trying to get rid of it are the Democrats. They say, no, 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 this, this infringes on your right to vote. It's voter suppression. And it's the conservatives saying voter ID just makes common sense because it's, you know, it's voting. It has to be for citizens. So that's, that's the two parties arguing over it. And you're saying you're surprised to have learned that. Well, yeah, it's, it, if you're not here arguing amongst each other about it, if you take a step back and just kind of look at it, it's kind of like, why is this even a conversation? It's such a basic thing. Very, very basic. Did you receive the COVID-19 vaccine and contract mesothemia? I saw one of those commercials. I was talking to it. So my wife, I told you, my wife and I were watching commercials from the 1990s and the 2000s. And one of those popped up. The metho, uh, meth, how do you say it? Let me, let me see the word. Such a long word. Mesothelioma. Yeah. <laughs> you may be entitled to, uh, here, let's see if he wrote the whole thing down. A cash settlement. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, I was joking to my wife. I was like, what if what if in 30 years they're saying that about the Pfizer COVID vaccine? Did you take the COVID, uh, Pfizer COVID vaccine? Got my fourth dose today. I'm artistic now. Me, so the lioma, me, so thylo Mr. Just sent 50 cars to CGC. Hurry before they turn into PSA. Sounds good, Mr. Trent. Nothing like a classic, nothing like a class action lawsuit. It's my money and I need it now. I saw that commercial. That's why the title of today's live stream is My Money, I Need It Now. Because I saw that I saw that uh, commercial go by. Mr. Justin Huerta, what's up, man? He says, hey, one fossil, one life shipping, please. Confirmed my addre address with you in Discord. Okay, Justin. So, where's the fossil at today? Oh, quite close. Cool. What's up, Grey Wolf? It's my money, and I need it now. <laughs> J.G. Wentworth. <laughs> there we go. Call J.G. Wentworth. <laughs> oh, man. Live shipping for Mr. Justin. Justin sounds good. Let's find your bag. Ha-ha. You got a nice big bag, man. Do you watch One Piece, mister? Uh, no, I do not. So, Mr. Justin, Mr. Justin, do you mind messaging me again on Discord? Because I thought you were messaging me on something I already shipped and that I had shipped it correctly. I want to make sure that the message has an address in it that isn't any different from the address in your PayPal, okay? Do you give us tracking or do you tell us when it's been shipped, says Mr. Quinn. Uh, you should get a tracking number. Yesterday, I shipped a few bags that... Uh, for whatever reason, Stamp didn't send out the tracking number. I watch One Piece. What? Okay. Justin, Justin. 
It's my money and I need it now. I saw a commercial for Heinz Ketchup. Okay, so Mr. Huerta, we're getting a new address for you. It was a Heinz Ketchup commercial and it featured green ketchup because of Shrek. It was Shrek Ketchup. Here we go, Mr. Justin. All right, Justin. Very good. It looks like the address you're showing me in Discord is the same address that you have in PayPal. So you are all good. Because in a situation where I don't know what to do, I always just default to the PayPal address. Okay, and print. Our first live ship of the night. The Grinch ketchup. <laughs> I'll be right back, guys. It's green. <laughs> green ketchup. I wonder if we could play commercials and not get demonetized. Probably not. All right, I'll be using the tape. You all know that. All right. Justin, we got you live shipped. If you had NBA hoops, I would drop 100 right now. Well, they're still on the way. All right. What was I going to say? I feel like I had something. To th oh, right. Yesterday, for just about five, no, it was six seconds, actually. For six seconds, a YouTube ad popped up, and it was an ad of a song from an artist whose music I didn't even want to listen to. I didn't even want to listen to the song. It was a YouTube ad. So this stupid ad plays with some artist's music, and it sounded terrible, and they claimed the revenue for the entire stream from yesterday. How about that? Now you can make your music into an ad, and if your ad plays in the live stream of somebody else's video, you can steal their entire revenue. So I'm in, uh, well, first of all, I muted the video, and then that didn't work, right? I muted the section of the video that had it, and that didn't work. So then, now I'm in a copyright dispute, with this is some, I don't know, is some, uh, I couldn't even read who it was. It was in Spanish. I, I don't know who was claiming it. I guess the artist is probably uh, Spanish and I'm just waiting to see if I win the dispute now. Apparently that, apparently they review, not YouTube, they review the dispute. So the artist who is trying to claim my ad revenue will make the decision. And it's like, what the, this is so effed up. It's crazy. How can they pull, how can they be an ad that that claims other people's is crazy? Anyways, and it only played for six seconds. Six seconds, and that was all it took. Now they're like, okay, all this is mine. Biden's dog bit another person. Oops. It's your money, mister. YouTube takes it when they need it. Just get YouTube Premium. Maybe. Uh, after that happened, I was tempted. I was like, maybe we need U uh, YouTube Premium to make sure we don't have that happen again. Tempting. Normally, it's not a problem. Yeah, normally, we don't have a problem like this. Okay. Are we going to have a busy night tonight? I wonder if it's going to be a busy night tonight, kitties. Mr. Javier Arroyo says, What's up, Mr. Six Matchless Fighters and Two Cosmic? Wow, that's a big order, man. Good luck. YouTube is trying to remove dislikes now because the massive amount of dislikes on Biden. Uh, YouTube's been doing that for a long time. Remember the Gillette... The Gillette commercial, they were messing up the likes on that too. People were like recording it to keep track of the likes. And someone was sneakily getting rid of dislikes. So it's it's always been that way. One, two, three, one, two, three. They go, nah, those aren't legitimate dislikes. Maybe this maybe it's bots that are disliking it. Maybe that's why. Sneak. YouTube is not a democracy. That's right. Sneep. All right. 
Rebecca Black, she was on a, she was on TikTok the other day. I ran into a Rebecca Black TikTok video. Oddish. Cottony. Oh, man, those are cold cosmics. All right, well, good luck, because now you, you need a hot one in here. Let's see. We've got Beedrill. How do I get in on these breaks? What's up, uh, Scotch? Scotch, you'll want to read the instructions in the description, okay, mister? There's a, a link to our Discord server, and that will take, uh, take you to the instructions. Blaziken Full Art. We're looking for a really good Full Art, aren't we? Cold. Like this one, mister. Oh! Hyper Rare Nido King. Did I say Nido King? Slow King. Their names are similar. <laughs> I knew it didn't sound right when it came out. Hyper Rare Slow King. We got to get a close-up of that one because that's the first time we've pulled it. Very jelly. Take a look at that. What if the background isn't anything in particular. It's just a uh, just a pattern. <laughs> it, it's actually a pretty well-designed Pokemon. I like it. The Galarian Slow King. Excellent. Congratulations, Mr. Javier. Woohoo, Nido King, you did it. <laughs> that's right. I knew it was wrong when I said it. I was like, that's not right. Slow King. Now let's go find your bag. Mr. Javier's bag would probably be in the JA box. Right. Jack Bello, Jesse, Jared. Javier Arroyo. I pulled the Blaziken Rainbow. What's it worth, you think? Um, I don't know. I guess it's worth whatever someone will pay for it. Congratulations, Mr. Javier. What a cool pull. Damon Smallwood for Darkness Ablaze. All right. Picking up some darkness. One, two, three, four. Looks like a Snorlax with a Cloister on his head. Not really. Looks like a Slow King with the with the Cloister on his head where it's getting eaten. Get the Pizza Bites ready. That's right. Sleep. Toss this out. Good luck, Mr. Smallwood. We've got Dark Ride. Poltegeist and Salamance. Ooh. If you could pick, you'd have a cloister on your face, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, and here's Dino. How's it going, Mr. Bay? How do I say her name? Is it Bay? All right, let me go ahead and toss this. Give me a moment. I got to restart start the music. There we go. My ability to re rewind the music got like... Oh, what the... <laughs> There's an ad because of Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. There we go. There we go. The music's reset. Perfect. Ha-ha. Now we are good for the next three hours. That's for Mr. Damon. Let's go find his bag. Any any vintage Japanese? Not tonight, mister. Damon Sims. Dayton. Dayton, your daughter. Dontrell. Danielle. Draven. Dustin. Dustin. Francesca. Mr. Damon. Nice to have you back, Mr. Damon. I can feel that you have a metal card in there. When will your dispute be fixed? I have no idea, actually. It could be a while. Sounds like sex music. That's because it is sex music. You're so astute. I've, Ivanski, whoa. He says, I hope you're having a good night. I'm going to go in on Cosmic, seven packs, and two live custom. I have a bag and a book box. You got it, mister. That is quite a large order. Custom custom packs and Cosmic. Cosmic continues to enjoy enormous popularity. 
so much that they really ought to consider reprinting this set. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is for Mr. Ivan Ski. I'm surprised St. Patrick's Day hasn't been changed yet because it's gender specific. Yeah, maybe it's because it's such a simple holiday. You go out and you drink beer. Where do you get all these pokey money? Don't ask me. This is other people opening packs. You should ask them. They're all pokey rich or something. Okay, there's Blastoise. Don't ask me. Here goes. It's Erica Blacephalon on pack number one. Tell you what, let me put that into the book. Can't wait for Christmas to be canceled. Ah! Oh! One very off-center, Nagata del Guzzlord, full art. Oh, man, that's a terrible printed card. Sorry about that. And then you pulled Pikachu. Mister, you did it! All right. So I'm looking it over for you. I got to say, it's a little thinner on the right than the left. You know, it's sad because it's the opposite of this card. This card's thick on the right, thin on the left. Based on the looks, it looks like it's going to be a solid nine. Very hot pull. That's like, is it the best card to pull in the box or is that going to the Charizard? Might be the Charizard. -ed. Pikachu's got to be like the second best pull though. Very nice, mister. Oh! Hyper Rare Oracorio. House is centering on this one. Now, this one looks well-centered. Let's check the back. <laughs> of course. Oracorio would be well-centered because we're not going after Oracorio. We're going after Pikachu. Mr. Ivanski, this was a much hotter round. A cosmic. You chose the right... <laughs> you chose the right night to go deep on cosmic. There you go. A seven packs and four hits. Woo! Much, much better luck for Ivanski this time. Hot pulls equal freak copyright. What? Yeah, I'm pretty upset about that copyright thing. I, I don't know how companies can get away with that. It's so stupid. How's your mom, Nick? What? What are we talking about? Okay. Ivanski. Did I ship your bag or did you get a new bag? I think you got a new bag and we put you up top. Ha uh ha! -huh. Found ya. Cool. Pikachu's going in the front because he's so hot. Congratulations. Let's see what's next. Oh, no, wait. You got two live customs, too. All right. Two live customs, right? Here goes pack number one. Umbreon, Eevee, Raichu, Pikachu, and Indeedee. Very cool. The Umbreon's pretty nice. Pack number two. Pack number two is a cold pack. All right. Oh, dear. Pokemons, Pokemons. Gonna poke you, Pokemons. How much for the Umbreon? That's a good question. If that Umbreon were to grade 10, he'd go for quite a lot. That's why I do know, because everyone loves Umbreon. Umbreon, for those of you who didn't know, is one of the most popular Pokemon in the franchise, along with Gengar and Sylveon. Gengar and Sylveon. Now we can move on to Mr. Adrian Aragon. He says, three shiny fates and a book box, Mr. I have a bag. Sounds good. So Mr. Adrian Aragon, the way it works with the book box, every time you order now, you gotta tell me that you got a book box, okay? And when it's time to ship, you can tell me whether you wanna ship that book box or not, or if you're gonna keep going. Uh, when I do ship it, I'll make sure that you paid for the book box by just going over your payments, and then, you know, they'll all ship out. It'll be really nice. Now let's pull your Charizard, huh? Is this your first order? I don't know if this is first order. Whew. Only the hot ones. Also, I'm telling mom. Sleep. I already swapped him for Advil, Nick. What? <laughs> Pack number one. Cramorant. Wow. Show me what you do with that beak, Cramorant. 
pack number two, coughing. And pack number three. Oh, ah, it's Gym Trainer. I was hoping you would pull something like Skyla. Look at those coomed out eyes. Oh my lord. Take a break, Gym Trainer. Go to the park or something. Do something wholesome. Jesus Christ. All right, we'll go ahead and baggy this up. Wash your hands and go to the park. She's been laying around too long. I found a cute little moth earlier. It just came out of its cocoon. Ugh. Feed it to your praying mantis. All right, there we go. Coomed Out Eyes Trainer. That's her real name, by the way. It's not Jim Trainer. They just, they couldn't put the full name on there because, you know, it's the children. Children. You gotta think of the children. Adrian does have a bag. Oh, let's go looking for it. Mr. Adrian decided. Aaron Fowler, Alex, Alexio, Adrian. Here's an Adrian. Oh, no, that's Andras. I'm sorry. Awesome card. Andrew Englander. Lots and lots of bags. When my wife and I move, we're going to personally put these bags into our own car and transport them ourselves to make sure nothing happens to them. Austin. Adrian. Here we are. Adrian! Okay, we're going to take these hollows out. Those are going to go into that bulk bag now. Oh, we got the Tyranitar too. That's so cool. That's right. We pulled so many Tyranitars. You guys have no idea. Infinite Tyranitars. Now, we're going to take this bag and pop these hollows into the bag. Next up is Mr. Justin. Justin says, hello again, mister. One hidden fates for the Zared. I need a new bag now. Sounds good, mister. Mr. Justin. So this is going to be the Charizard, right? I'm afraid not this time. I'm sorry. Mr. Justin Huerta, you got the jinx. She's going to give you a big smooch. Smooch. Wouldn't it be nice to ship them all out and have a fresh table? Yes. Uh, some people don't want to be shipped out yet. The other thing is that would cost an enormous amount of postage. And so if there's people who would benefit from combined shipping, then there's no reason to do that. You know, a lot of the bags on the table are owned by people who are going to open up cards the very next day. So if you ship them all out at the same time... Uh, you would just be wasting postage, and it adds up very fast. If you've never sat down and ordered $500 of postage and seen it all go out in three days, you should definitely try it because it's, it's like an experience, you know? It's like, where'd all that money go? It's all gone now. Mr. Alex PSX, three, Champion's Path. You got it, Alex. Mr. Alex taking a risk. I love it. Let's see what happens, Mr. Alex. Sad path. Hey, I hope you pull a Charizard, man. I really do. For how long does the bulk box last? Great question, mister. Uh, so, in theory, it can last as long as you want it to. A great example is GMAC. She's been around the channel for a while, and she just keeps her bulk all the time. That's just how it works for her. Uh, on the other hand, some people order a bulk, and then they abandon their bulk. They, they just don't care about it. They don't ever tell me to ship it, and they never come back. Um, so there's there's supposed to be a time limit to how long you can hold on to your bulk box. Uh, but the method I'm currently using is I have a large bulk box where if you abandon your bulk, usually it's like one or two bags of bulk. I stack it nicely in that box. And then there's a, on the shelf are the active people who actually use their bulk box. And uh, basically what I'm saying is as long as you're ordering cards, you can keep that bulk box as long as you want. Just please, when you know you're done, come back and tell me to ship it all out, okay? So you need to come back and tell me. You tell me in Discord in the Please Ship channel. You say, please ship out all my bulk box. I'm all done. You know, I don't need my bulk box anymore. Okay, here we go. Obstagoon, Santa Scorch. That's pack number one. Pack number two. 
We've got Ekin Sideguard. Uh oh. And pack number three. Come on. Ha Patterine. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Why does Champion's Path even exist? It's such a terrible set. Such a terrible set. All right, Mr. Alex PSX. Look at all these hollows. All right, let me grab this. Hmm. Okay. He says, woo! I know. <laughs> Getting the hot ones. Getting the hot ones ready for someone else. Let me go ahead and refresh. Sorry, Mr. Alex. It's unfortunately a set that's printed to Oblivion. Ha, ha, ha. What are you talking about? Champion's Path? Yeah, they printed a lot of Champion's Path. That is true. On the other hand, the number of people collecting these cards has dramatically increased. So, I mean, over time, will they print more cards? Yes, but also uh, the population increases. So, you know, there's a give and take. You're done for the night? You don't want to open, like, 20 more of them? I mean, probably the Charizard's, like, right up there. Probably, like, the next 10 packs, man. Next up, we have Mr. Jo Jose Soro. What's up, Jose Soro? He says... Five Darkness Ablaze. All right. Actually, hold on. No, that's that's incorrect. It's not your turn. I'm sorry. I apologize. Mr. Mr. Jose, it's not your turn. Um, I got confused because there's somebody who orders who I thought it was his turn next and that or that we just finished him. So actually, we had finished Alexander and it's Mr. Patrick Hammett's turn. Okay, so I got to make sure we do these in order. Sorry about that. Mr. Patrick Hammett, he says, Hey, mister, hope you'll be able to close on your house soon. Me too, by the way. May I please get five matchless fighters and two live custom boosters because they're not wigged anymore. That's right. That's true, actually. They're live boosters. They're live boosters and not wigged packs. So we've got five matchless fighters and two customs, right? Let's see what's in them. Pack number one. Oh, Dreadnought Full Art. That's pretty cool. Pack number two, Hollow Magic Card. Toss these away. Now let's get these five packs. What's up, Hansa? Ooh, I think I paid for seven. May I please get five matchless fighters? Are you saying that you think you paid for seven and then you said five? Because that's possible. Give me a second. So... That would be 40. Which means you have 35 left. No, you paid for five. You paid for five, mister. You did your math right the first time. All right, here it goes. Do I play Pokemon Go? I play Pokemon Go to the polls, like Hillary Clinton told me to. He says, right, I wanted seven. That's why I did 75. Oh. Okay, but okay. Yeah, your math was right initially. You did order you you ordered five packs and two live customs. Pack number three. Here's Inteleon. Pack number four. That's cold. And pack number five. Oh, mister. Who's this? I don't even know who this is. You just picked up a full art. Wow, congratulations. I have no idea who this is. That's not a waifu, though. That's a guy. Hmm. He says, that's Rick. Brawly? Oh, his name's Brawly. That would make sense, because it looks like he's pretty Brawly. <laughs> Ma Champ in human form. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Not bad, because you didn't open too many of them, and you pulled a full art out. For Mr. Patrick... Patrick, Patrick. He's in the Patrick, Patrick box. Mr. Patrick. I got the hyper rate version of them. The hyper rate. Next up is Dustin Day. He says, hello, mister. I'll take one XY evolutions and one live custom pack. You got it, Mr. Dustin. So we'll start with the live custom pack. This is for Dustin Day. Pulling professor's research. Was she researching after all? I bet she researching how to kill all men. I'm watching you. Here we go. Too many people, so it's pointless. I'm able to get up. What? I have no idea what he's talking about. 
Here's dugong and radicate. Oh my lord. So here's the dugong. What's up, Adnet? Just the dugong. I am so sorry, mister. Kind of a cold pack this time, Dustin. Dustin Day. You'll have better luck next time. I've been rejected a few times. What? I'm sorry, mister. There's more fish in the sea. Next up, we have William Valls. Payment from William Valls for 28. Is Mr. William here? It, there's no note, so I don't exactly know what he ordered. Actually, uh, I really ought to just refund it. What's your bulk look like? Hey, there's no bulk at all now. Look at that. It's all cleaned up. I'm getting rid of my bulk because we got to move, and we do not want to move a bunch of bulk. William Valls, I received an... Did something sell on e eBay? Is that what happened? Maybe something sold on eBay. I can't tell. It's not eBay. It's from tonight. All right, so Mr. William Valls, I don't know what he was trying to do. I'll keep this up for a minute, and then I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to do a refund on it. Mr. Connor Gillespie is next. He says, one shiny star V. This is the squeakiest freaking charity. All right. Shiny star is so popular, I might as well place it up top real fast. So, Mr. Connor returns. How's it going, Connor? Tonight, you're going to have the best luck, right? Is CGC more strict on grading? Yes, they are not just kind of more strict. They're a lot more strict. I, I sent in, for example, a bunch of Japanese cards that were packed fresh, and they looked well-centered, and they all got 9.5s. So, that's how tough they are. So... CGC is going to give you some very, very, very tough grading. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about them because I think it's too tough in my opinion. It's tough to the point where it's like, really, who cares if, you know, these two molecules are slightly off or something because it's such a minor issue with them. They have a totally different economy for their cards and it would work if CGC was the leader in Pokemon card grading, but they're not. So the way people perceive tens is sort of based on PSA's grading scale, not CGC's grading scale. So you're going to have a situation where you're going to lose money if you try to sell your CGC tens. That's the way I see it, as well as your CGC 9.5s. So that's the problem with the CGC right now. Their cards are underpriced in the market. William says, I'm William Valls. I want four matchless fighters. Okay, give me a minute. Yep, that sounds about right. You got it, Mr. William Valls. Welcome to the table, Mr. William. Don't forget, you got to leave a message, okay? So in the PayPal order, uh, you got to tell me what it is you're ordering. Mr., there's two Snorlaxes? What? That's right. There's two Snorlaxes. Who's your preferred grading service? Uh, PSA. PSA is the preferred grading service. Although, uh, you know, it's been a crazy ride. Card grading has gotten so expensive now. It's, it's actually really interesting. Pack number three. Oh, man. Pack number four. Oh, man. You got a perfectly cold round, mister. That's very unlucky, Mr. Valls. I apologize for that. I hope you get a better pull in the future. Very unfortunate. Next up, we have Connor Gillespie, who says, one custom live pack. Here you go, Connor. Connor pulling two hollows. How many more fossil custom? Uh, like three. There's like, no, no, no. There's four left. Four fossil left. I don't have the fossil packs built up. 
I suppose I could do it live because it's only 22 packs. So that's a possibility if the line's not too crazy. Six three fit girl with a sleeve. I have no arms. I knew it. Alexio Alvarez. Alexio Alvarez. Two live custom packs. You got it, Mr. Alexio. Mr. Alexio. Oh, what'd you pull? Three large. Da -da -da -da. That's the Price is Right music now, right? And Houndoom. So three large is equivalent to $120. Wow, that's pretty cool. Mr. Open Pack with Feet. That's right, I'm going to do it. And we're going to write your name down. But sir, <laughs> oh my gosh, go get me that Pokemon. But sir, there's kids in here. There you go. Uh, oh, also, these are yours, aren't they? So, Alexia, are you right in the front? Will CGC appreciate? Yeah, I think they will. I definitely think they will. Uh, however, I think you're really going to get screwed out of a lot of the, the value of your 9.5s for a long time. And it won't be until there's sort of like mainstream adoption of CGC grading will the 9.5s go for the price that they probably ought to go for. You know, personally, I don't know if the 9.5s will ever go for the price that they're truly worth because nobody cares to collect a 9.5 of anything. It's like saying, here's your almost perfect card, too bad. You know, because a, a 10 pristine is already not perfect, right? So a 9.5 is just another way to say 9, in other words. And people will say, oh, 9.5, maybe PSA 10. Well, no, not, a, not truly, because PSA 10 is going to include all of the cards that would have graded CGC pristine 10 and C even CGC perfect 10. You see what I'm saying? All right, Mr. Damon returns. He says, for matchless plus, please add a book box to clear some room off of the table. Sounds good, Mr. Damon. So Damon would like to have his own book box now. And Mr. Damon, every time you order, you need to let me know that you have a book box. Sneep. Oops. Do you have a CGC 10, says Ever Treminio? Uh, no. I ha well, I have one sitting on the, on the floor waiting to be shipped out, but I don't own one. Here's, oh, nothing but cold cards. And we've got Urshifu again. And nothing but cold ones. Wow, that's rough, mister. So, Mr. Damon, these are going to go into your brand new... Sports car. Da -da 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 I can't get prices right out of my head. <laughs> oh man, seeing those cars from the eighty, the eighties sport cars are so cool. They look awesome. They make me think of like synthwave. There we go. They definitely had a neat aesthetic to them. What's up, fan? How's it going, man? Okay, Mr. Damon. Adrian Aragon returns and says, one live custom. I have a bag and a book box. Boop. Cheryl. You got Cheryl and Cherim. Okay. For Mr. Adrian. Adrian!
uh, Mr. Grizzly Grows, uh, don't advertise, okay? I just want to mention that. So next up, we have Jose Soro, five, Darkness Ablaze. Five darkness. One, two, three, four, five. Bob Barker is greater than Drew Carey. Nobody will beat Bob Barker. He has such a such a style to him. He was so finesse. He was an excellent show host. And Drew Carey's not bad. He's just not as good as Bob Barker. Bob Barker really made the prices right. But, you know, I think Bob Barker had that old feel to him, and that's part of what made it so good. Swana. Swana, we have Daramaka. In The Price is Right, you had, like, these ladies would win, and they'd jump up on the stage, and the first thing they'd do is kiss, kiss them on the cheek back in the 1980s uh, episodes. They'd jump up on stage, they'd give them a big kiss on the cheek, and all I can think is, this would never happen today. It would never, ever, 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 ever happen today. That's gone. You'll never see that again. Did I watch Whose Line Is It Anyways? A little bit, yeah. I did, actually. It was a funny, funny show. It was a great show. Yeah, Whose Line Is It Anyways? And, ah, uh, sent a scorch for Mr. Jose Soro. Boop. Picking up Rose. That show was hilarious. Mr. Jose Soro. Let's find your bag. Bob Barker was a classic sober Richard Dawson. Well, it's funny you talk about girls kissing Bob because, oops, because Richard would kiss the women. Ah. <laughs> I think I heard about that. Um, I heard about those old game show hosts going a little too far. We still have a cute girls. All right. That's Mr. Rose. Wayne Brady is a goat. Man. <laughs> I wonder what those girls did to get on the show. Uh, I suppose have their name pulled from the back, right? Man, PayPal really wants me to make a business loan with them. Jesus. That's because they, uh, they charge you a price for making the loan. Speaking of uh, goats, Jake, tell your mom I said hi. Tom Brady is the goat. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a bull and a goat have a headbutting fight, and the goat won. It was so amazing because the, the bull is so much larger, larger than a goat. And uh, maybe it was a ram. I don't know what type of, of goat it was, but they, uh, they bashed head. And the ram was much smaller than the bull, and the, the goat still won. And I learned an interesting thing. Apparently, skull, the, the goat's skulls are way better designed for that than the, uh, than the bull's head. I had no idea. Very interesting. You learn so much when you're scrolling through the internets. Mr. Emmanuel Panetta. Mr. How's it going? Three live packs. Also, thank you for submitting my PSA. That was a super pog clutch. It was super pog. Heck yeah, man. How long does it take to pull after you pay, says Scotch? Sometimes Scotch is very short. Sometimes it's like 15 to 20 minutes. Other times it can be up to two hours. It depends on how busy it is that night, okay? So this is for Mr. Emmanuel, pack number one. Pack number two. Oh! CGC 7.5 and pack number three. Mustard. How many Evos do I have on the table? I don't know, maybe like 10. So a 7.5, what the heck is that? I don't even remember. Apparently I have a 7.5. Oh, okay. That's an interesting card. So this is Dark Weezing from the Team Rocket collection. It is vintage, and he's actually hollow. It's always hard to tell with Weezing because he's so dark, but there it is. You see that? So there you go. It's, oh, it's a Dark Weezing. Now, if I've already got a Dark Weezing, I have a Dark Weezing as a 10. So I don't need two of them, which is why you're going to have this one. I would say the average wait time is at least an hour, especially when the stream really gets going. And the stream really has started because we're 70 minutes in. So uh, 
one thing is to be very early and to make your order as early as you can, and then your wait time will be very short. Uh, so if you want to know when I go live, it might be a good idea to hit the bell, right? I'm supposed to do that, right? I'm supposed to tell people to hit that bell. Well, other than just getting people to follow you, it does actually have some functionality. You'll know exactly when I'm going live. The other thing is to just be active in the Discord server because I always ping the server just as I'm going live. So that's how you know when I'm starting. And if you can get your order in early enough, you won't wait too long. Mr. Emanuel, where are we going to find you? I feel like you're on the sidebar. We're up top, maybe? Maybe? Hmm. Let's check in here, then. Oop. Tell you what, let me set this down over here. Congratulations on that pool. Estuardo. Ever. Emiliano. Eric Guzman. Yeah, you're definitely, like, on the side or something. Let me check up top, just to be sure. What kind of graded card sleeves do you use? Uh, all you need to do is search fit sleeves. They're all pretty much the same. You want to make sure you get the PSA fit sleeves. There's, like, a few brands, but they all essentially, they're all, like, the same dimensions, as far as I know. Give me a minute. Ah, here it is. Please make me mod and send me to the Shadow Realm. There we go. Don't forget, if you've got a big fat bag like this, you can get $2 live shipping on that bag anytime you want. Next up is Justin Congleton. What's up, Justin? Hello, first time by. I would like the large custom booster. Thanks. How's it going, Justin? So, Justin, are you watching? Because I want to explain the large to make sure you understand how it works. So, this is simply a reserve list of people who are ordering uh, large custom boosters. That's what this bag is. And when we hit all 23 packs being sold, we will then open up the custom booster packs all at the same time. Some Most people will pull holographic cards out of their booster, some people will be lucky enough to pull full arts and V cards or GXs. And then one very, very, or in this case, two very, very lucky people will pull uh, some nice PSA cards out of their packs. That's what the custom booster boxes are all about. But before we begin, first we build up a reserve list. So we open them all at the same time to make it fair for everyone. Eric Guzman, he says, let me get that live booster. Oh, and hope all is well with the house stuff. Thank you, Eric. It is well so far. Dude. Oh! What'd you get? CGC 5.5045. Hmm. 5.5, huh? It's kind of a low grade. If I can find it. No, not that one. One, two. Here we are. It is. Oh! This is also a vintage card. This is going to be Erica's Vile Plume from Jim 1. Jim Booster 1. Leader Stadium Hollow. It's a weird way to say it. Uh, but we would call that Jim Heroes Japanese. And, and the Japanese just called it Jim 1. Very nice. Don't fall. Just going to grab it. What is this terrible music, man? Hold on. Holy... That is some bad, bad music. There we go. We'll skip that music. All right. Erica's Vile Plume. Congratulations. It's quite old. You can see it's from 1998. Play Link to the Past. Maybe. All right, Eric. Let me get let me get that live booster. He ordered one live booster and pulled this out. That's actually pretty cool, right? Play Monster Hunter Rise soundtrack. Uh, that that's interesting. We could test that out. Something tells me that the it'll be too much like battle music, which I don't think battle music fits this uh, sort of live stream very well. 
Louis Rodriguez. What's up, Louis? He says, two XY Evos live shipping. I have a bag to the left. Thank you very much, Mr. Lewis. So, Lewis, two XYs, huh? Here they are. Two XY Evo and live shipping. Sneep. That's why I said I'll enjoy one to you. What? What is he talking about? Here it goes. Professor Oak's hint. What else we got? Magnemite Charmander. Okay. So first pack's a little cold. Maybe the second pack will be extra hot. Pack number two. Oh, what could it be? Ah, it's nine tails. What a tease. Of course, we have to eventually pull this nine tails. So here it is. Nine tails has been pulled. Such a tease, man. That could have been Cherizard right there. So Charmander, Machoke, Magnemite, Charmander again. Cool. Good night, mister. Well, you have a good night too, Mr. James. Let's grab your bag, Mr. Lewis. Lewis, did we put you in the overflow yet? I feel like we did. Yes. I believe we had to. Your bag was so large. Okay, cool. Better luck next time, mister. You pull the Charizard next time. All right, we'll place that there. And let me get some bulk. Place it on the back. All right. Mister been trying to play Monster Hunter World and didn't realize it's mostly online based. Is it worth trying to play through single player, says Mitch Shep. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's not necessarily true that it's only online based but i would say some of the coolest fights are online so like kolv taroth uh you probably don't want to fight fatalis by yourself you probably want to fight him with the team extreme behemoth behemoth um uh, probably more like uh what's the elemental dragon that they released i don't even remember his name arceus or something like that i, I don't remember his name so there, there's a lot of really big fights that i think are really fun with the, a full group and you can still play it single. You can play the whole game solo. It's just, oh, Elatrion, thank you. Not Arceus, Elatrion. Um, yeah, there's Elatrion. He's fun to fight with the group. It's a little more challenging to fight with the group in some cases than it is to play by yourself. But uh, yeah, you could definitely play the game by yourself. Now, having somebody who understands the game a lot more than you do is very advantageous if you're still learning, right? Because if you try to learn the game on your own without any help, you are going to be grinding for so long because the game is very knowledge-based and the more information you have about the game, the better and the faster you'll make it to the end of the game where really it's the end game where you have fun. It's a very long, grindy game. But if I were you, I would pick up Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise is a better choice because that's where I think a lot of the veteran players are going to be because it just came out. So all the players who have enough money to pick up a, a Switch, or maybe they already owned one, they're all going to be playing that. A lot of veteran players have moved on from Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter World Iceborne. They already played it to death, and they said, all right, got to do other things now. All right, Mr. Louis... Cards are on the way, Mr. Lewis. Let's see what's next. So after Lewis, we have Mr. Juan Garcia. He says, one live pack. Can we keep the good luck going? That's right. One pack, one hit. Whoop. Well, not this time, though. Onyx and Bronzong. Don't got Discord, how do I buy? 
I'm afraid you can't participate if you don't join our Discord server. That part is required, okay? Because we, I do all my communicating on Discord. So it's, that part is absolutely required. If you've never used Discord, it's not that complicated. It's totally free. You just join with like an email and then you'll be in my server and you can talk to people in my server. You send private messages to each other, including to me. And, you know, if you want to buy cards, you'll need to be able to private message me. So, Alex, PSX says, one fossil custom. Mr. Alex. Now, I, I suppose there's a way for you to order cards from me without ever joining Discord. Here's the only way to do that would be to order live shipping every time you order. So if you want to order with live shipping every single time, you wouldn't have to join Discord. All right, there we go. How y'all get those Pepe? You're talking about the Pepe emojis? The Pepe emojis are, uh, they're unique to this channel. And in order to have access to those exclusive emojis, you have to be a member of the channel. So a membership is it's just like on Twitch where you do like subscriptions. Uh, basically, you're paying a small fee to support the creator. Well, in this case, uh, a, a membership on YouTube for this channel is just $2 a month is fairly cheap. And uh, so it's not very much money and you get the Pokeball next to your name and then you get access to all of the exclusive emojis, including the Pepe emojis. Next up, we have Mr. CS Gaming. What's up, CS Gaming? He wants one Sword and Shield base. Ooh, Sword and Shield base, where's it at? Here it is. Ugh. One Champion's Path. Ah, yes. Champion's, Champion's Path, the best set. And one Vivid. Here it is. Good luck, mister. Sneep. Why don't you guys show off all the different emojis that we can uh, use on this channel? And by the way, the Pokeball is really cool. Eventually, it turns into a Master Ball. Ooh. Mister, I bought an 1879 Silver Morgan Dollar and John F. Kennedy as well. Oh, cool, man. Here's Yamper. And Dust Noir Darmanitan. Look at all those emojis. What would you guys say is the most popular emoji? I want to know which ones you guys really could... Which ones do you guys think we could get rid of and you wouldn't miss it? And which ones would you say are so good for this channel? It's like, never give it up. You know what I mean? Like, never, ever get rid of this emoji. I think one of my favorite ones is definitely the Pepe business. Where he's holding the Charizard card under his hand. Did you know I... Uh, I personally edited that in. So if you see anyone on the internet using the, the Pepe business with the Charizard card underneath, all you got it. Well, I suppose somebody else could have edited it themselves as well. It's not that complicated, but I personally edited that one. Never give up on the Spanx. Let's see. Spanx was really popular when it came out. Remember Russ would just use it indefinitely. He would just come in and spam it. <laughs> So, CS Gaming, I'll go ahead and get you a fresh bag. You're on the table now, mister. Steelix emoji. All right, we'll get a Steelix emoji just for you. Make the Pepe and Charizard an NFT. <laughs> Never give this up. Never gonna give you up. Who wants a pack? Me, 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 me. I want a booster pack. Kellen Egan. What's up, Kellen? One, Shining Legends. Two, Matchless Fighters. You got it. One Shiny, two Legend. Do I have any Shining Legends? Oh, man, I got to open a box of Shiny Legends, huh? Me, 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 me. Did I miss a donation tonight? So I received a $5 donation. I didn't see it. Oh, there it is. Mitch Shep. Mr. sold the rainbow chunk you pulled me waiting in payment so I could buy a fossil. Sweet. Nice, man. Glad to hear that. Mr. I'm so depressed. I don't know what to do besides watch your stream. Not looking for attention. This sucks. Tell us what's going wrong tonight, mister. Is everything going wrong? Sometimes life sucks. That's really how it is. 
you'll be you'll be unsurprised to know that it sucks for everyone at some point. April Fools got him. Oh my god. This man trying to pull April Fool jokes on on us. Mr. Please. He ain't pulled hard. These nuts got him. What? <laughs> so here are the lovely shining legends. One of the most expensive sets. I think these are the most expensive single packs I offer right now. They're very unpredictable. That's why I'm not afraid to sell them, uh, you know, one pack at a time with no reserve list. It's because you can have two hits in a row or you could have 10 cold packs. They're super unpredictable. Mr. Kellen Egan, good luck. Hmm, I can't tell. Yeah, that's a cold pack for Alligator Manaphy. Sorry, mister. And now, two matchless fighters. What are you doing? Did you hear Biden gonna ban people with first name Sigma? <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, it says, not matter how hard and rough life gets, sometimes you just have to slog it out. That's right, until you die. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, man, don't think about it. That's that's my advice. Have some cookies and soda and open Pokemon cards because you're not going to you're not going to change the future. Even if it's a bad one, you're not going to change anything by just feeling anxious and down and depressed. That's it just won't. It doesn't change anything. That's what I've learned over time. It's called acceptance. You have to accept your fate, your pokey fate. Man, fee and for alligator. Oh, man, that's a tough round, Kellen. Kellen Egan. New bag? I think he needs a new bag. I don't recognize your name, but I'll take a quick look because you didn't mention. Kevin, Kyle, Kyle. Kurt, Kyle, Kara. K.O. Lee, Kyle. King, Lavish. Man, Lavish, when are you going to sell me that, that uh, Pokeball? Love the Pokeball cards, by the way. They're so freaking cool. I think they're better than, like, the full art energy cards. If I wasn't... Man, if I wasn't saving up all this money so that we can get moved, I'd be buying Pokemon cards this whole time. I would have been buying Pokemon cards. Instead of, like, shrinking my collection, I would have been expanding my collection. Okay, Kellen Egan. Kellen Egan. Pika, he bought me packs and a metal card. Trade Mr. for a shiny Zard. What? <laughs> okay. Now let's go ahead and get a refresh. I want a shiny Zard. Who's going to be brave and open some breakthrough tonight? I want to see some breakthrough, man. I've had anxiety attack last week. It was scary. Now I'm learning to accept everything as is and keep it moving. Yeah, you know, uh, my wife, when I first met her, and we weren't really even dating yet, we weren't boyfriend, girlfriend, we were like flirting and talking over the internet a whole bunch, and then I made her late for a paper she was supposed to have written, but of course, she doesn't really like to write papers, and what I did was I wrote the whole paper for her while she went to bed, and then I handed it off to her, and she was like a goody two-shoes, and she never cheats, she never does anything like that. So she handed this paper in to like the professor at college, which is like her doing this evil deed. She's cheating now. She's letting her boyfriend write her paper, you know, or, or, or this guy she might date, I guess, uh, write her paper. And I guess she had a panic attack right afterwards. It's so, it's so funny lo looking back on it because she was so like, I guess, innocent before she met me. She would never have cheated or anything like that. And then she meets me and the first thing I'm like, let me cheat for you. <laughs> Very first thing it's like, here, let me do your homework. You know, for because for me, writing papers was just something that took like 25 minutes tops uh, because writing was always very, very easy for me. And, uh, you know, and the paper did did fine, but she still had this panic attack because she was like, she couldn't handle it. The, the thought of somebody having written her, done her homework for her was too much for her. All right, let's see. Come on, PayPal. Mr. Has the CGC subs had any movement? Mine just moved to schedule to grade. Uh, maybe. I don't really keep track because it's kind of a pointless to keep track. Brian Ochoa says, I want to open Breakthrough, just no Pokemons tonight. No Pokemonies tonight? Ah, oh, man. I'll make you a credit loan, okay? I'm just kidding. That would be a terrible idea. 
Do you guys ever get tired of like the stationary camera? What if the camera was like up here? Would this be better? I've thought about having the camera be up here, but I feel like you just get these bags in the view. I kind of like the way it is, where it's kind of like focused uh, with the area you're gonna see the cards. Max it out, he says, oh my God. I'll max out alone. All right, I've refreshed. And who was the last person we helped? Kellen, right? Let's find Kellen. Here it is, Kellen Egan. I'm gonna go backwards now and make sure nobody was missed. So Kellen Egan, CS Gaming, Alex PSX, Juan Garcia, Louis Rodriguez, Eric Guzman, Justin Congleton. Hello, mister, my first order. All oh, right, he went into the uh, large. Was it the large? Yeah, he's in there. Emmanuel Panetta, Jose Soro, Adrian Aragon, Damon Smallwood, Alexio Alver Alvarez, Connor Gillespie, Connor Gillespie. Good, okay, we are ready to go forward now. Derek Withrow's next with a very large order. He says five evolutions, five breakthrough. Wow. So we're going to have five evolutions and five breakthrough. I'll start with the breakthrough. Mr. Derek Withrow ordered a very large order. This is very pricey, guys. Five of these and then five of the breakthroughs. Holy moly. I hope you pull a Charizard. I really mean it. I want to see a Charizard come out for you because you like to go deep. And I like to see people who go deep get the good stuff. I have the opposite problem of you guys. I can't bring myself to open anything. Just hoarding sealed. I'm just hoarding all my pokies. Sneep. One, two. Mister, my life feels worse than a cold pack. Now, come on, mister. Uh, you know, I can understand life being pretty tough. I don't think there's anything tougher than a cold pack. You know, so. I'm just a little biased, though. Pokey, pokey card breaker over here. You got cancer? I mean, that's tough. But it's not as tough as getting a cold pack right after somebody else pulls the Charizard. You know what I'm saying? That's really tough. There's pain and then there's real pain. So that looks like a perfectly centered Charmeleon. Mister, that might be a 10. And if it is, that's a great card. Oh man, that's looking like 10. Awesome. Okay, first pack is good. How about the second pack? Misty's Determination. Uh, this one's a little off center. It's looking a little thinner on the top. You know, if that got a 10, I bet that would actually sell as a 10. Oh, Magmar. You see the red and it, it fools you for a minute. So here's Magmar. Ah, that's going to be Nido King Break. Nothing too fancy about Nido King Break. How about this last pack? And Leaf Energy. So you started strong with the Charmeleon. The other cards are just going to be okay. But let's see if you got any secret rares in here. We're going to pick out all the good bulk for you. Set so expensive that you got to start considering parts of the bulk. Yep, like this Pikachu. He's good. Uh, this Mewtwo is good, in my opinion. You got another Pikachu. That's great. All right. So I'll go ahead and bulk off the rest. And let's go ahead and get these into a penny sleeve. Star or break is the best break for what it's worth. Now, five packs of XY Breakthrough. I'm very curious. Good luck to Mr. Derek Withrow. So this best, the best card in this set is probably all those different Mewtwo's in this set. There's some really cool Mewtwo's. And there's two Mewtwo secret prints in here. And we haven't pulled any so far. So I'd love to see one come out. Of course, I'm hoping both of them come out multiple times. Pack number one. Here's Grand Bull. Pack number two. Remoraid. Pack number three. We've got Obama Snow and Meloetta. Oof, man, we need a hot pack. Pack number four. Okay, you've got Chestnut Break. Oh, no. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Pack number five. Pack number five is going to be a Ralts and a pretty cool-looking Eveltal. So I'm sorry, mister. Those breakthroughs are pretty tough this round. Go ahead and toss this away. No luck. 
you pulled, this is actually probably pretty gradable, the break, despite the way people think of break cards. Um, the only card that stands out amongst the hollow uh, and reverse hollows is really this Aveltal, but you can see he's thicker on the right side of the card. If he was a perfect 10, he'd probably be decent. Yeah, that's tough, man. I'm sorry. Breakthrough and Breakpoint are just tough. Well, I really like break Breakpoint. In fact, it surprises me every night that people don't open more of it. Breakthrough, I'm still a little unfamiliar with. We haven't opened a lot of Breakthrough. Uh, obviously, back in the day, you could open these packs retail for like $3 a pack. And so you could open, you know, five of them for like 15 bucks. Today, they're really expensive. But so are the PSA slabs. So if you pull a really good card out of Breakthrough, uh, you could send that off to grade and actually flip it very easily. Mr. Derek Withrow, let me get these into your bag. So, you know, as the, pr as the price of the packs, oops, as the price of the packs move up, the price of the slabs move up at the same time. Well, I just sent those all sliding across the table. It's a good thing they're all in penny sleeves. They didn't go that far, though. They're very slippery. Good thing they're all protected. I ended up buying all the singles from both sets on TCG. There we go. So, Derek Withrow, where am I going to find you? We got a Christopher Martinez bag, which is huge. I think you're over here. Evan Shea. I found Evan Shea. Do you need a new bag? He says I have a bag. Wait, do you have a, do you have a new bag? Is that what happened? Maybe he's got a new bag. Do you send in for grading? Thought they halted subs. Yeah, so submissions. Here we are, Derek Withrow. Submissions to PSA are halted. However, you can have me send your cards off to PSA and just we'll just wait for it to open up. I don't mind doing that for anyone who wants to wait a long time. There you go, mister. You got a nice thick bag again. Uh, and the other option is to have me send your cards to CGC. I can, I can actually do that. You can see my prices for hiring me to do the grading for you in the description. Adam Kozlowski says one large. You got it, Adam. Mr. Adam. Adam Kozlowski. What we might do, we might start sending some cards off to BGS now in order to split the load between these two companies because they're probably both going to take on a lot new, a lot of new orders thanks to PSA uh, not taking orders for a while. Do you guys want to know what I'll personally be doing? I will personally just be saving my cards for when PSA opens back up. So I'm just going to be waiting those three months. That's it. I don't know about you guys. CGC is just very different from PSA. They grade so differently, and they have a totally different economy to their cards. They got the 9.5s, which are almost like PSA 10s, and it's like I just don't want them because they don't sell like PSA 10s. So with CGC, select cards will go off to CGC, um, but my best cards will still be going off to PSA. So that's what I'll be doing. And I'll just be waiting. I'll be waiting three months or however long it takes. Okay, so next up we have Mr. Robert, Robert Munoz. Is that right? Yes, Robert Munoz says he wants one XY evolution. You got it, Robert. Mr. Robert, good luck with your pull. Chance for Black Label, though. That's true. All right, Robert, picking a lovely, picking up a lovely reverse hollow Gyarados. What else is in here? Coughing, Pipichu. Here's a Pipichu, okay? That was for uh, uh, Robert Munoz. He says, I don't have a bag. Very cool. Grab a new bag. Here's your brand new bag. For all the new people, remember... When you're done buying cards for a while, you know, you're like, all right, I got to take a break from this. Go write me a message in the Please Ship channel to get your cards shipped, all right? I don't automatically ship your cards out. I only do it when you request it. You have to request shipping. And it's not very complicated at all. You just, you just write a simple message in the Please Ship channel. Next up, Eric Guzman for Matchless Fighters. Feeling good tonight. 
I bet you are after that earlier pull. So four matchless fighters for Mr. Eric. Eric, only the good ones. Remember when them vape ads were on about stopping teens from smoking? How come they don't do that with weed since it's very accessible and even legal in some cases, in some states? So I think you're talking about telling kids not to smoke weed. Uh, that's a great question. I don't actually know the answer to it. But one of the things I've talked about in the past is how can smoking weed be, be all that much different from smoking other things? You're putting smoke in your body, right? It's, it's the same basic idea. Um, people just shouldn't be inhaling smoke. And, and people will make like a counterclaim like, oh, it's weed. It's good for you. I don't know if I believe that. I don't think I do. I think I read some articles that said that the tar from marijuana is just the same. It's not the it's not the substance. It's the fact that it's burning. So burnt leftover substance should never go into your lungs because it's bad for you. THC is good for you. Invest! Uh, but, you know, he mentions THC. Well, there's different ways to get THC. You can eat an edible or something like that. Uh, Tony Pepperoni says they don't add the 40 chemicals that they do with smokes. Yeah, so Tony, I've heard a lot of counter arguments like that, but in the end, what you're doing is you're you're taking something, you're burning it off, and then you're inhaling the smoke from that burning stuff. You're really not supposed to be doing that for your lungs. The whole point, the reason you've got like a body that filters, you know, like your nose tries to filter out stuff out of the air is because it's unhealthy to breathe. You shouldn't be vaping. You probably shouldn't be smoking, but everyone does it because it's very addicting. Uh, and it's just like anything else in life. You know, it's like you shouldn't eat tons and tons of sugar, but here I am with a box of cookies. So what are you going to, you know what I mean? But, but at least be objective about it. Don't, don't lie to people about it and say like, no, no, smoking's healthy. It's, I don't, I'm not sure if it's ever healthy. You know, you're inhaling a drug because you like the drug and then you're rationalizing that it's healthy. That's why things really is happening. So when I eat a cookie, I don't tell myself, the cookie's healthy. It's been fortified with vitamin C. I, you know, I don't say anything like that. Although the companies will talk to you that way. You ever see those, you know, like the cereal, cinnamon toast crunch, fortified with vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K. Bro, you're eating a cup full of sugar. Stop lying to me. You know what I mean? Stop trying to confuse me about what I'm injecting in my body when I eat cinnamon toast crunch. It's garbage. And I know it's garbage. It's dessert. Uh, but it's probably the same way with smoking marijuana. Uh, you should be very thoughtful and objective about what you're actually doing. You're inhaling smoke and you're doing it for a prolonged period and you're holding it in your lungs so you get the drug effect. Uh, it's burning stuff. I don't think there's any good burning stuff that you're supposed to be inhaling. Mr. Eric, where's your bag? Mr. You're a genius. All right, welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> welcome to my TED Talk. Today we're going to talk about... <laughs> Stupid. Show me one stat that shows smoking weed causes cancer. People have been doing it for thousands of years. Well, Tony, people have been smoking tobacco for thousands of years too. Uh, and they didn't always inject a lot of chemicals into cigarettes and cigars and they would still get lung cancer in the past. Okay, so later on they added the chemicals, but people were already getting lung cancer from it. So it's, it's you know, tobacco, by the way, is a, is a leaf as well. Most people seem to smoke it on a daily basis at one point, which seems kind of unhealthy long-term. He came to Germany to cure his cancer. The realist talks come from Mr. Holding it in is actually an old wives' tale. THC actually enters instantly. Yeah, but I like to hold it in like a good fart. Pokemon and dabs. Yes, smoking anything isn't good for you. Tip rips a fat dab. I'm sure Mr. would have had a Ted X talk edgy. Don't even need to inhale. Bob Marley had lung cancer from weed. Just saying tobacco and weed are two different things. Right, but, you know, uh, let's say that you took a gummy bear. No, no, no. Let's, let's say you took a Flintstone gummy and then you ground it up into a powder and you lit it on fire and then you inhale the smoke from the Flintstone gummy. It doesn't ma matter that it's made out of vitamins. You're inhaling smoke. You know, you get it? You're inhaling smoke. You're inhaling burnt stuff. They're finding out, by the way, that like even burnt toast causes cancer for you because you're eating burnt stuff. Apparently burnt stuff is really bad for you. It's carcinogenic. 
burnt stuff is bad for you. If you didn't know that, go look that one up. I don't know about weed. There's, there probably are some studies on it already for weed, but but we already know that for the burnt stuff because they've they've posted articles on it and scientific findings on it. Uh, if you're eating burnt toast, you're eating a carcinogen that comes from burnt stuff that you put into your body. You're not supposed to do that. So uh, you could probably still do weed, uh, just maybe not from smoking it. Maybe do it a different way. You know what I mean? Mex says you can get cancer from anything. That's right, Mex. But but drinking clear water and not eating cookies and not inhaling smoke all day uh, is probably going to – probably you're going to have a longer life than if you were to do all of the worst things for your body, like shoot up heroin, eat a whole box of cookies, and uh, I don't know, huff paint. Okay, so people very often – that's a rationalization argument is what you're trying to do. And I, I was just trying to say that earlier. I was saying people will try to rationalize the thing that they're addicted to. Oh, everything causes cancer, right? So then with that, with that logic, you should be able to do anything and live the exact same amount of life. Okay, well, then why don't you huff paint all day? Because it's going to fuck your brain up. You know, you're going to have physiological changes to your brain and it's going to ruin you for life. That's why you don't huff paint. Oh, everything gives you cancer. I, I get I get the argument there, but again, it's this, it's an avoidance about the facts that some things give you cancer much faster than other things. You know what I mean? Next up, we got Connor Gillespie. What's up, Connor? He says one custom booster, Mr. Connor. Welcome to my Cookie Monsters typing. Oh, Connor, you got Electabuzz. Welcome to my TED type talk. Tonight we're going to talk about um, smoke weed every day. <laughs> Welcome to my pokey TED Talk. Huffing paint actually cures cancer and makes you smarter, says Dylan. Well, I know, right? Like, that's almost how people will make it sound with weed because I've been in these debates before with whether or not smoking weed is harmful for you. And uh, that's how they sound. They're like, yeah, actually smoking weed will, will heal your lungs. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? <laughs> it will heal your lungs. You will live twice as long. Kurt Thomas says, one large, one fossil custom, one live custom. I need a new bag. So Mr. Kurt is all about the custom packs. Kurt Thomas, new bag, pulling holographic dark rye. All right, Mr. Kurt. I used to joke with people when I worked for Coca-Cola. By the way, if you ever get a job for Coca-Cola in the actual grocery stores, in Walmarts and Targets, you will run into Coca-Cola fanatics. There are fanatics. And they will actually like compliment you and be like, hey, it's the Coke guy, my favorite guy, right? And sometimes when I run into them, I would cleverly joke, Coca-Cola makes you younger, smarter, faster, healthier, helps you lose weight, you know? And they will always get a kick out of that because the, the concept here, the reverse psychology is that it's so good for you and that's actually how they try to uh, advertise it to you. Coca-Cola, this multi-million international company worth billions of dollars. Did I say multi-million? Multi-billion. Uh, th this company that has more money than some small economies, some small countries, they will sell Coca-Cola to you like it's good for you. It's just it's just syrup, isn't it? And, and food dye and everything that gives you diabetes. But they're like, here, have a little pick-me-up, Coca-Cola. It's so BS, right? And that is the same way with weed. Smoke weed every day. It'll make you younger, smarter, faster, healthier. Your lungs will last forever. You'll never get lung cancer. It'll actually cure your lung cancer. And it's very much like religion. People will just believe whatever they want to believe. And, you're, you know, for all the people who are uh, siding with me on, like, the maybe my belief that a government shouldn't be able to create second-class citizens because they shouldn't be able to separate those who have injected themselves with the thing versus those who have not injected themselves with the things. You know, if you believe in that because uh, maybe you would like to believe in it, I just want to point out I'm still very much on the side of, of not rejecting scientific ideas, including ideas like, look, if, if the – black tar from smoking burnt weed gives you cancer, then maybe you shouldn't smoke it if you don't want to have uh, whatever, fibrosis, uh, whatever they call it when your lungs go bad. There's like, a, there's like some term for when you get lung cancer. It's terrible sounding. Weed is bad for you. Smoke cocaine instead. Smoking weed is awesome, and for sure, THC is good. The delusion that smoking weed is good for the lungs is not true. So, mister, you're telling us you don't drink Coca-Cola? I drink ginger ale, and it makes me younger, smarter, faster, keeps me alive longer, cures cancer, uh, and just uh, helps me lose weight. 
Kurt, let's get you into the fossil into, and into the large. Mr. Kurt. We're born with THC thedons. <laughs> Younger, faster, smarter. Come on, guys. You know that's all a bunch of garbage. It's a drug. You're addicted to it. And that's okay. Um, but don't lie to yourself about it to make yourself feel better. Just like you're addicted to the pokies. We all know we're addicted. So if ginger ale is any better or you drink it because you like it. I drink it because I like it. It's my favorite soda. Yeah, I like the flavor. If I liked the flavor of Coca-Cola, I'd be drinking Coca-Cola. But I actually don't like that flavor. I never did a backflip before. Everything's bad for you. I mean, water's really not that bad for you, man. Just drink water. I drink soda. It's probably going to give me a kidney stone someday. And I'm going to be crying in the bathroom, passing a kidney stone. Could have just drank water my whole life. It's no chemicals at all, except for maybe some very, very, very um, small trace chemicals from treating the water. Or you could get like well water or, or uh, who knows, whatever, filtered water, whatever. So water is probably way healthier than soda. You're going to get diabetes. I'm not addicted to the pokies. I can stop whenever I want. Buys two booster boxes. I know, right? Mr. Javier Aurora. What's up, man? He wants five matchless fighters. And live shipping. I have a bag. You got it, mister. Mr. Javier. Ooh. Ooh. Water's pretty healthy. I ain't never heard of no one getting cancer off of pokies. They get wallet cancer. That's where your wallet dies. <laughs> Moltres, what are your thoughts on Huang energy drinks? I've never heard of them. That's, that's new. Today I learned that TCC is a vegan. I am not a vegan. <laughs> not a vegan at all. Oh, that's cold. Can we get a hot one? Jesus. And that's cold as well. You pick up one Moltres. Woo. Mr. Javier, he says he's ready to be shipped. Let's go grab your bag. All right. Oh, well, that's why there's no hot ones. You sniped the good one with the Slow King, man. My daily caffeine intake can kill people. Hey, Mr. I'm back. What's up, back? Nice to meet you. What set is this? It's the latest set, Matchless Fighter. Nothing is more new than Matchless Fighter right now. It hasn't even been released in English yet. So if you wanted to get the very, very, very latest, uh, you would get that one. Okay, Mr. Javier, let's see what you got. Thank you for confirming your address. Aha, it tried to print the, it tried to print the label without sending you the email with the tracking. I don't know why. The software does that. It's so terrible. I, I caught it this time, though. So you are definitely getting your tracking number. Whoop. Okay. See, I'm going to be smoking weed every day when I get out to my house in Lake of the Ozarks. It's gonna be me on my boat, kitty, smoking weed. Now, you know, honestly, when I learned that weed, when I learned that weed like slows your motivation down, that was it for me. I was like, I'm never gonna touch this ever. I heard about that and it was easy to stay away from weed. I'll try it. I'll try it like one time probably. Just to know what it feels like. And I'll try it when it's legal. But it's actually very easy to avoid something that lowers your motivation. Because it's like, why would you ever want... It's like telling... You know, when I heard that, when I heard that weed lowers your motivation, 
you know, your, your ambition, right? That's almost like hearing that there's a drug you can smoke that makes your dick smaller. That's what it sounded like to me. The moment I heard that, I'm like, oh, so there's drugs out there that make your dick smaller. I was like, oh, Jesus. No, thank you. I want absolutely maxed out ambition and motivation in my brain because that's really important to me. Mr. Who are, we, who are we doing next? We have Mr. Connor Gillespie who ordered one custom booster. Hopefully it's a hit. We took care of that, right? Yes. And then we have Mr. Kurt Thomas who ordered a large, a fossil, and a live. And then we did Javier. So now we have CS Gaming. Mr. CS Gaming made an order, but he didn't leave a message. Imagine, imagine doing a drug that lowers your natural sense of ambition and motivation. Are you crazy? Why would anyone choose that? So for me, it's a very easy decision. I just don't want it. I wish it was the other way around. Could you imagine, what if there was a drug that made you more ambitious, harder working, and like more motivated? Maybe that's cocaine, I don't know. Well, I would take that all day if it existed. I would, I would, I would stock up on so much of that, you would have no idea. So it's like, take this drug that costs you money and makes it so that you earn less money and you're just less impressive to women. Or take a drug where you get all your work done, you make tons of money, and then you buy a boat. You know, which one are you going to choose? It's such an easy choice. I don't even know how people start. Like, who got you hooked on weed? You, did you hear about it from, like, Snoop Dogg or something? Or, like, you got a friend who was an idiot and he, got, he gave you weed or something? Yeah, I don't understand it. So for me, it's very confusing. I just... I have no interest in lowering my natural ambition and motivation. That's, that's terrible. Oh, also memory recall. So you're just less intelligent if you smoke weed for a long time. You know, it sounds so, uh, what's the word? Irrelevant when you hear the word uh, memory recall. Makes it harder for you to remember things. But isn't that basically 100% of your intelligence? If you can't remember something, you get a bad score in all your school. Peer pressure at a young age. Can't judge from inexperience, in my opinion. Look at those weed apologists. I do coke so I can work harder, so I can make more money, so I can do more coke. Not exactly true. I just I started selling it at a young age in my city. I'm ADD, so I take ADD pills. Mr. Being stinky brain. Yeah, I know. It's probably not a, it's probably not popular to rip on weed because it's a cultural thing, isn't it? But you should ask yourself, do you want to be like everyone else? Do you just want to smoke weed because people told you weed is cool and you want to be like everyone else? I'm going to move to a boat house. I'm going to own a boat and I'm going to live on the lake. And it all came from hard work. It just worked crazy hard my whole life. And one of the things I navigated and made a choice on pretty early in life is I didn't want to do drugs like weed because I didn't want to lower my intellect and I didn't want to lower my motivation. So, and that's worked for me. You know, if I wasn't here opening cars for you guys, I promise you, I'd probably be like my wife. I'd probably be a senior software engineer. I would have done the same thing. So she's a senior software engineer and I'm a content creator with the now a card business and it's working for us and we're moving to an expensive home and we're going to live a decent life. You know what I mean? You could choose differently. You can like smoke weed at a young age and by the time you're old, maybe you can move to a nice lake house, but I don't want to be old when I move there. I want to be young when I move to a lake house. So it's like, it's just, it's different choices you can make in life and you can really make a choice and you have to believe that you can choose. But you are going to be like peer pressured into doing drugs at a young age and there's all these ads, don't do drugs. But then there's like this counter culture to it where it's like, oh, don't listen to the ad, do the drugs. But then you find out later there's some scientific research and it's like, yeah, you, you actually lose motivation on it. That's, that's, that's not something that's debated. That's something that's known about the drugs. Just like caffeine gives you anxiety, faster heart, heart rate, and, and it makes you work faster, that kind of stuff. So... Mister, you're 100% right. You start forgetting things. Wait, where are we? Weed affects people differently. Weed made me motivated, but someone else, it might make them sleepy. When you first start smoking, it does make you sleepy and less motivated, but once you get used to it, it's really nothing but a head high. Using it for medication is different, guys. He's talking about taking it recreationally. It doesn't lower everyone's intellect or motivation, though. Haha. -ha. Weed is a split subject because everyone reacts to it differently. You're sounding like an ignorant douche right now. It's called Adderall. The benefits outweigh the negatives. Mister, I snort nerds and crush smarties. New York legal baby woohoo. Mister, there is two types of weeds. I see you dusty. 
Weed doesn't make you like every other person that uses weed. Damn, check out goes wild when it's about drugs. So I, you know, I get it. There's people who disagree with it. He says, okay, now I'm unsubbing. So happy for you, Mr. Motivates me to do. Likewise, we got very similar motives. It makes you get the munchies. From a recreational standpoint, I can see where you're coming from, Mr. Medically, I don't. Well, yeah, I'm not talking about weed being used. You know, if so if you're using it for uh, maybe you have seizures or something like that, that's totally different, okay? I'm talking about maybe somebody who's addicted to the high that you get from uh, marijuana to the way you might be addicted to uh, eating junk food and that makes you obese, right? So m most of us here are okay. We're very comfortable admitting that you can't eat uh, you can't eat a box of cookies every day and not expect to get obese and the obesity is going to slow you down and, and make it harder. For, uh, life is going to be harder for you and it's not good for you and it, it could make you uh, less prosperous and live shorter life and maybe not have as many blah, 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 right? So it's the same for uh, any drug. You know, if alcohol was doing that to you and alcohol can do that to you, alcohol can do a lot of brain damage to you. You guys ever wonder why a drug is a drug? It's because it's in your brain, right? So you understand that part? Some people don't even, they don't think about it that far. A drug makes you feel a certain way because it's going up into your brain and changing the chemical balances in your brain. Uh, and maybe changing the choices you, that you make in a day, right? Maybe you decide to lay around and do nothing versus getting up and working all day. And uh, that's a, it doesn't seem like it's consequential, but over a long period of time, like let's say you've been smoking weed for five years, you could think about all the stuff maybe you didn't do because you were laying around smoking weed. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be allowed to do the things that you want. This is the part a lot of people don't understand about me. If smoking weed is what's most important to you in life, then you should just go smoke weed. That's the point. But the goal is to have a good life. That's that's my goal. So the reason you work so hard is to have the things you want. So you should find out what you want. Do you just want to smoke weed every day? Well, then voila, you've already you're already doing it. Do you want to live on the beach and be one, you know, somebody who's living on the beach in California or Florida or wherever you want to move? Well, then you got to work really hard and be able to afford all those things. You know, especially if you came from a poor family. Uh, and a lot of people come from poor families. So you have to you have to make a choice on what it is you value in life and make sure nothing's interrupting it. Just kind of filter out the things that are interrupting it. I live by a sandcastle of dirt, mister. Dopamine release is also from pack opening. We're addicted to you. I see what you're saying, mister. I think maybe some people didn't. I'm smoking right now myself. Yeah, so uh, what I was trying to say here, I was not saying that no one should do weed. Just like I'm not saying no one should ever eat cookies. I'm not saying you shouldn't be allowed to eat cookies. What's the point of being alive if you can't occasionally go and eat a cookie? But, uh, you know, where cookies would make you overweight, the concept of maybe being affected by marijuana in a way that slows your ambition down, that to me is real scary. So being overweight's not quite as scary, although that's I can I take that seriously as well. But losing, losing motivation and ambition, uh, a lot of people I feel underappreciate, they underappreciate that psychological aspect of motivation. Why do some people just work really hard every day and get ahead? I don't know. It's a mystery. It must be magic. You know what I mean? And it's not really magic though. And uh, if you can increase your level of work energy, you can just be richer in life. It's really simple. You know, uh, you make more money because you just work more hours. And that was especially true for me. Uh, for me, getting ahead was just working more hours. If you work 14 hours a day, one day you'll be wealthy. Especially if you work 14 hours a day with the understanding that you need to improve what kind of work you're doing. So a lot of people can't figure out why CEOs are paid so much. First of all, they work harder than you. But second of all, they try to become a CEO. So, and that's where all the money's at. And and they don't just randomly get into that position of power. You got board of directors, you got investors, you got other managers, other people who are corporate, uh, you know, whatever elitists, and they're choosing you. They're saying, all right, welcome in, you're the new CEO. So, and then you make multi-millions of dollars because you're the best, you've been chosen. So people can't figure out how like CEOs make so much money. Well, they're probably the most ambitious, most intelligent, most skilled people in the world being chosen for those positions. And that's why they make all the money and they get to live in a fancy mansion in uh, California, for example. And uh, like Elon Musk, for example, how is Elon Musk so motivated and so smart? Uh, he probably smokes weed. He smoked weed on the Joe Rogan show, but he probably just does, if I had to guess, a small amount of it. And he focuses most of his time into working and making sure that 
you know, if, if he felt like his ambition was being checked by the marijuana, he probably would put it away because if he didn't have that level of control over his life, I don't think he could be that successful. It's just not, it's not something that happens randomly. You know what I mean? That's why I'm trying to explain. All right. Let's see who's next. Elon will grow the Mars on weed. Hey, you know, if I live out in the middle of nowhere, I wonder if I could get away with growing meat, weed in like a backyard or something. That's kind of where we're moving to. My wife and I are moving really out there. Uh, we'll be so far away from... Uh, so even even amongst the lake, the, the part of the lake, the portion of the lake that we have access to is like 30 minutes away from the town. So we'll really be out there. Steve Jobs dig drugs. How long has it been since we opened a Pokemon pack? 10 years. You just have a bad impression of weed and you're just used to people that can't handle their drugs. When did this become a boomer channel? I can grow four plants legally for recreation here. I want to hear you take on conspiracy. What does a fossil custom booster consist of? Bro, bro moving somewhere he can finally smoke. That's right. Steve Jobs and a few others liked acid. I'm doing acid. If they did it, I should do it. But wait, aren't they the boomers? I thought they're the boomers. They're actually old. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. We helped, we stopped at Mr. CS Gaming, who I owe $19 to. He never left me a message. Kellen Egan, he says, one Shining Legends. One Shining Legends. Here it is for Mr. Kellen. And one XY Breakthrough. Here we are. I would recommend oh. taking out acid with all the colorful cards around you. I'd be scared living on a lake. You might be stuck in a loop. Sleep. Zoomer gang. Fun fact. 420 is Hitler's birthday. What? If you guys remember Hitler, he, uh, he was doing a bunch of drugs himself, and they believe that contributed to why he lost the war, if you guys didn't know about that. So you pull Mr. Marowak break, and... Marshadow Raikou. In other words, drugs win again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was learning that uh, he was on meth. Oh, man. I heard it wasn't just meth. I heard it might have been meth and cocaine. So he was taking drugs, and he took it for a long time, and they believe it actually uh, inhibited his ability to lead later on. Mr. Kellen. Hitler was a junkie. That's right. Freaking junkies. Is the Fossil Custom Booster self-explanatory? I'm new here. Uh, how's it going, new here? Stick around, mister. You'll learn. Mike Spanos says, one breakthrough. You got it, Mr. Mike Spanos. But, sir, he, he made his wife take cyanide. What? Pulling Meloetta and a salt vest. Imagine Hitler rolling up a blunt after a long day. Oh, my God. He had so many chances to win the war and chose not to. Yeah, we were learning about that in a in a Netflix documentary on World War II. It was really crazy how close he came to winning the war. And then he made some terrible decision uh, that his generals probably would not have made. So he, he actually sort of lost them the war. Mr. Mike. Netflix documentary. I thought it was pretty good. Osmar Mike Spanos. Yeah, I thought the documentary was excellent. Let's invade Poland. Send it, Hitler. Reminded me of my dad when I tell him I'm hungry. Mr. CS wants breakpoint. Just don't go to the Scientology rehab called Narconon. What? What are you talking about? Mr. Jack Walsh. Jack Walsh says, hey, Mr. One Shining Star V and two matchless. I also paid for CGC grading with the subgrades on my VMAX Charizard yesterday, and you missed it. Did I really? Oh, right. You said that you were... Of course. Okay, we'll take care of that. I told you to remind me of that. So here's the Shining Star V. Two matchless. All right. Tobacco is actually kind of gross. I'm very insulted that you would make fun of my very favorite drug, mister. Now I'm going to get mad and call you a boomer. Boomer! We will never know the true meaning of the war. 
of war. Yeah, he said of the war. There we go. Jack Walsh. Let's grab your cherry zard. Where am I going to find your bag, though? Here it is. Haha! -ha. I had a shot of vodka. It was crazy. You had a shot of vodka? We need more May cards. Where's the May love? That's true. Where's, where'd those May custom cards go? Mr. Do Drogs has Charizard base set PSA 10. What? Oh, my Drogs has Charizard. Wacky to backy, WW3. Do the first ever Area 51 Pokemon pack open. All right, I'm heading out there. Instead of going to Stalingrad, he should have just went to Moscow. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that was one of the mistakes they made. They said, we will go attack Stalingrad to piss off the Russians, and they ended up getting defeated and uh, losing a lot of uh, losing a lot of men and a lot of supplies that they needed to help fight uh, the UK and America. In fact, it was so crazy that they decided to fight Russia at the same time at all. Like, if they just hadn't made that choice, uh, the war could have been so much more vicious for so much longer. All right, here goes. It's Amazenta. And really, uh, Russia does not get enough credit for their role in the war. I didn't learn about how many Russian men died in the war from my education. I learned it later from things like the uh, uh, Netflix documentary. They played such a large part of the war, and we don't even give them credit because we had, you know, we had our whole Cold War with them, and now we treat Russia like an enemy. It's kind of sad if you think about it. Oh, Blaziken, two packs, two pulls. Very nice. Very nice. That was for Mr. Jack Walsh. All right, Jack Walsh. I heard that the population decline in Russia was so bad after World War II that there were girls like hooking up two to a guy. If you had, if you were a guy and you were married to a girl and you had a girlfriend, it was just like accepted. Like they didn't like it, but it's like they understood because there were all these girls and no men. Patrick Hammett. What's up, Patrick? He says, hey, did I take care of Jack Walsh? Yeah, I did. So Patrick Hammett. Hey, mister, I need a pack of Hidden Fates, a pack of Cosmic and live shipping. I have two slabs. Don't worry, coming back for more. Just would like to get those slabs home. Thank you very much. All right. One cosmic. You think a Netflix documentary is like a Bible or something? What? What are you even talking about? It's just a TV show. It's a TV show. I didn't say it's like the Bible. And, and what is that comparison anyways? I don't think the Bible is meaningful for anything historically. The Bible's like uh, Noah parted the Red Sea with his staff raised or something like that. It's almost like a children's fairy tale. So what's the com what's even the comparison here? All right. Hidden Fates and Cosmic. So let's grab the Hidden Fates. That's why the death rate was so high. Mike, Mr. Has PSA Pack Grading been suspended as well? Uh, that is something I've not looked up. People are like, hey, I want to spend money on pack grading. How much is the Cosmic... Uh, it's listed in the description, mister. Sleep. All right, good luck. Let's see what we got. We've got Dragonium. And, oh, Guzzlord. Yeah, the Netflix special probably was just written by people who wanted to talk about World War II. The nice thing about World War II is it's been documented so many times and for so long uh, that I'm not terribly concerned that they're t spreading a bunch of lies on Netflix about what happened in World War II. Oh, it's all phony. Uh, you know, whoever wrote it probably was a historian in the first place. And if anything's truly wrong, I could probably go find it on the internet. But the internet's the second source as well. I didn't watch World War II with my own eyes. So I'm just listening to people talk about it. And they, there's some interesting stuff about it. And then he compares it to the Bible. Like, well, first of all, I don't I don't consider the Bible a source of information at all anyways. So why would you make that comparison? Mr. Patrick. Patrick Hammett. Do you charge less for packs because you keep the bulk? Uh, 
Sure. Mister, have you ever farted on stream? Never in my life. Henry says, it was a figure of speech. Jesus is the way, mister. Mister, I didn't realize that until you told me, and now I am saved. Mister, do you collect only slabs or raw cards as well? Uh, I collect raw cards to turn them into slabs. Watch Sea Spiracy, mister, a documentary about overfishing. I think I saw one about how uh, the fish farming of salmon is super unhealthy. Dang, one of my Pokemon gyms got raided. Does anyone know if Inuasha has any cards? All right, we're gonna have Inuasha cards on this channel in no time. You ready, Mr. Patrick? So Patrick says he's got two slabs. Mr. Patrick. All right, we'll grab this. Salmon farms are disgusting. He says, that's what I was learning. I was learning they're pretty bad. A lot of the time, the fish that we buy in the supermarket was farmed in another country where they don't have any rules about how to farm the fish. So we have strict rules about how to farm it in our country, and then they farm it in a country with no rules, and then, you know, maybe they ship that fish product off to another country that appears to have strict rules, and then that country ships it to us, to avoid our regulations. Two PSA slabs. Only hot ones. Actually, do you have one here? I got this little holding place. Let's see. Connor, Emmanuel, and Eric. So no, not here. I'm loving the gossip tonight. It's great gossip. Ha ha. Mr. Patrick Hammett, your two slabs are live shipped. He's so hyper to get them home. He's like, I want to see them. Thoughts on Champion's Path? My Champion's Path is the best set. All right. After Patrick, we have Jonathan Westfall. He says, one, X, Y, Evo. You got it, Jonathan Westfall. Ooh. Ratata. All right. Ratata and Hollow Nine Tails. Nice. Little print line I see is very faint, but it's in there. The Ratata looks very well centered. Now he's a little thicker on the right. How about the uh, anything else in here? Nothing else in there. We're going to bulk those. I was scrolling on Facebook and saw a guy selling cards. He thought the pot report was a pricing guide. Oops. Jonathan Westfall. Does he have an overflow bag? I have a bag, he says. Let's go find it. The menu's getting bigger, mister. I know. We've got a really large menu. John Hagerman. Joey DeMarco. Hmm. You love Pokemon? Here we go. Jonathan Westfall. Someone buy the fossil. 
What's up, Olivia? Derek Withrow, two evolutions, one wigged. I have a bag. You got it, Mr. Derek Withrow. Two evos and one wigged pack. Oh, hollow pee pee chew. All right. Oh, let me place this here. Liking the detective Pikachu. He looks very detective. I don't know how I feel about the new legendary Pokemon riding pony. Seems like a Yugi thing. What? What's going on? New legendary Pokemon that ride ponies? I want a pony. Pack number one. Oh, man, that's such a good pull. That's the Charmander. And once again, the card's looking very clean, just like the Charmeleon. You know what this means. You need to pull the Charizard now, right? Okay, second pack. No Charizard there. <laughs> Pulling Charmeleon and Charmander. That's a hit. The Charmander is definitely a hit. Let's see what you get in here, though. I like the Arcanine. That's it. No more pee, -pee chews Mr. Derek Withrow. You got Charmander. You got Charmeleon. It's a pokey sign. Oops, that's Dave Jance. Where did we put you, Mr. Derek Withrow? We put you in the overflow by now, surely, right? Here it is. Ha ha! Gotcha. There we go. Next up, we have Ivan Ski. Hello, Ivan. One live custom, one XY breakthrough, one vivid. You got it, Mr. Ivan. Here's the vivid. Here's the... Oh, wait a second. This Detective Pikachu is also Mr. Derrick's. Sorry about that. There we go. Sweet. One vivid, one breakthrough, and one live custom. Oh, Geodude. Very nice. So that's Geodude Tops from the uh, Top Series 1. And then let's see what we can pull out of these two packs. Hopefully only hot stuff, right? Hope I'm next. Gotta go to sleep. Mr. Scotch, what's your name in PayPal? Oh, Amazing Rare Jirachi was in there. Very nice. Vivid Voltage is just a little more generous. And... Hey, that's actually pretty cool. You got Zoroark Break. That's definitely one of the better looking break cards. All right, that was for Mr. Ivan Ski. You keep all of your bulk. Let's grab your bag real fast. Here it is. Boop. You're just 11, Mr. Ivan Ski's bag would be up top. Ah, pulling that pee, -pee chew, man. See, Dectables? Dustin Day is next. He says, hello again, mister. I'll take two. Ooh, Woonified Minds. You got it. One Detective Pikachu. Oh, very nice. And one Live Custom. Okay. One Live Custom. For Mr. Dustin Day. Right. Oh, pulling the ditto. Mr., we're loving the ditto. Let's see what else we get. Do I like Dragon Majesty? Ah, uh, not really. Dragon Majesty is too expensive. Snip. I remember when I was a kid, we were never supposed to tell strangers our age on the internet. Really? Here's Age of Slash. Pack number two. Pulling Escavalier Slacking Hollow. All right. How about the Detective Pikachu pack? Jigglypuff, Magikarp, more lol, and another slacking. What were the odds of that? Double slacking. Wow, man. 
Remember slacking? He was just kind of like a ripoff of Snorlax. Snorlax slacking, huh? Those AOL chat rooms. Well, you know, I was never really in those AOL chat rooms. My parents simply didn't allow it. Dustin Day, I believe you're over here. John Ailman. Dustin Day. You're 41? Mister, how's it feel to reach your 40s? I hear that you're not truly living life until you hit your 40s. Probably because you spend most of your young life just trying to get set up financially, you know what I mean? Ingrid Vargas. What's up, Ingrid? He says, hi, mister. Could I please order three Vivid Voltage? I have a bag. I share a book box with Ivansky. What's up, Ingrid? You sure can. I have a bag. Okay, you got your own bag, huh? I was Penguin Chat flirting with all the honies as a teen. Penguin Chat. Looking for a girlfriend. My oldest son is excited. See, I told the kids we'd pack battle for the Zard. All right, so here it goes. This is from Miss Ingrid. Ingrid pulling Drone Rotom. Trubbish. And Charmeleon. Man, I would call him a hit, but I can see he's off-centered, so I'm going to bulk him with your other cards and a fresh bulk bag. Mr. Ivansky. All right, there you go. Thank you so much, Ingrid. Connor returns. He says, one Shining Fates. Ah, no Shining Fates. Let's go ahead and grab a box. Is this chair squeaky enough? I don't think this chair is squeaky enough. Him saying girlfriend has reminded me I actually need one. No, you don't. You're 11 years old, man. You don't need a girlfriend. Too young for a girlfriend, man. You just enjoy life right now. Girlfriends are when you want to make all kinds of mistakes in life. That's when you get a girlfriend. Now nah, I'm just teasing. If you want a girlfriend at 11, I don't know what it matters. Does it matter? I don't think it matters. All right. Here we go. One Shining Fates from Mr. Connor Gillespie. Oh, Grookey. You got one Reverse Hollow Grookey. That's for Connor. You did it! And Connor is up top. Yes. I have an ex that's lesbian. Is that the latest evolution of, of Evie? Lesbian? John Gomia says, Hello, Mr. One Shiny Fates. One Unified Minds. One Vivid Voltage. I wanted to change the daily packs to one of these, so I'll let you choose. Uh, okay, the daily pack. I don't know what you mean. So, here we go. Vivid Voltage. Shining Fates. And Unified. Ta-da! Woohoo! The sooner you get a girlfriend, the sooner you can learn to deal with breaking up. That's a good point. Snip. I had a girl cheat on her lesbian girlfriend with me. Her girlfriend was not a happy camper at all, but I didn't know. I didn't know. She said she was single. Question mark. We got Gossifleur. Oh my lord. Masprit. Oh my gosh. And Toga Kiss. All right, Mr. Mr. John picking up this beautiful Toga Kiss. Are we about to Toga Kiss? Okay, so John Gomia. He's going to be up top in the J boxes. Wouldn't it be nice if we just found him like instantly? That'd be so nice. Are we about to smooch? Are we about to smooch him? Are we about to toga kiss? You hit rock bottom when you broke up with your girlfriend. Ah oh, man. Hitting rock bottom at 11 years old. That's tough, man. Louis Rodriguez says, two XY Evos. I need a new bag, mister. What will happen if another Louis Rodriguez orders? How will you know which bag is which? The name is pretty common. 
Well, I tell you what, Mr. Luis Rodriguez, let's go ahead and give you a unique number so you feel more comfortable with that. All right, so your unique number will be nine zero. All right, and you would like, what is it? Two XY Evos. Good luck, mister. You want more slabs? Mister, you don't get more slabs. That would be illegal. I almost had sex with a hot one-armed girl, but then ended up drunk and did her prego friend. It was a wild New Year's. What? What are you talking about? Ghastly Clefairy? Oh, my Lord. That's almost as good as having sex with a one-armed girl. There's Clefairy and Ghastly. And... Oh, there's one of the Charizards. It's about time. Mega Charizard EX popping out just in time. I was going to say, man, we weren't seeing any of those other Charizards, and I was getting tired of it. I was getting fed up. It's like, where's the Charizards? Sandshrew Weedle, Poliwhirl, Pikachu. All right, that was a very hot round, mister. Congratulations. For Mr. Louie, you got it, Louie. furry girlfriend and then there was rooms about me cheating up on her you better not be cheating on your girlfriend at 11 years old mister that's not a good start mister that card is dope do you see him he's pretty neat oh and lewis let me give you that number if y'all ain't cheating, ya ain't winning. All right, let's see, Luis, Luis Rodriguez. I mean, I don't, I don't really agree with that. I think you're just saying that to be silly. But for anyone that takes that to heart, that's definitely not true. Here we go. And we'll toss this back over here. There's too much. USA soccer team didn't qualify. Definitely sure it's a good time when you hit the chance of getting multiple packs. If you aren't cheating, you aren't trying. I've heard that one for school, and maybe that's a little bit true for school, though I have to say, if you're, if you're getting an education and a job that requires lots of skill, um, you know, I, I still can understand the, the desire to cheat, but you should at least also have the skill, you know what I'm saying? So just having a good grade isn't going to get you far in, in an actual industry where you have to have skill, you know what I mean? Let's see. Next up, we got Jonathan Cruz. He says, one live custom booster and one sword and shield Japanese matchless fighter. All right. You got it, Mr. Jonathan Cruz. Pack number one. Ball toy. Oh, man, that's a hot ball toy. How'd you even get that ball toy? Let's go ahead and open up your one matchless fighter. Maybe it'll be a hyper rare. It's possible. Maybe you have about one in uh, 30 odds of it being secret rare. Two arms are overrated. That's right. Women's team has less competition. What? What are we talking about now? I'm afraid that's a cold pack. So that was for Mr. Jonathan Cruz. And now I have to find out if you have a bag, okay? Because you didn't mention if you had one. Mister, you missed me becoming a member. Did I really? Hold on. I might have. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, here we go. Patrick Diaz became a member. Thank you so much, Patrick. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to miss it. There's so much that goes on. I did not mean to miss it. Joseph, Wong, Josue, Joey, Joshua, Jonathan, Joshua. Let's try the other box. You should go into the Ozarks and look for Bigfoot. That's true. We're going to find Bigfoot. He's out there. I believe it. Here we go. Jonathan Cruz. All right, mister. You, in fact, did have a bag. He says, I do have a bag. 
It's true, it's true. I was the bag all along. Joshua Keenan. What's up, Joshua? He wants two matchless fighters. He says, I have a bag. It's not a big bag. I was born like this, mister. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Can I move in? All right, you can move in. There's a garage with like enough room for two bedrooms up top, apparently. It's like a two-story garage and it's detached from the home. And in the listing, the people selling the home showed off like bunk beds in the garage. And I'm like, that's weird. I don't know. Maybe they have like people staying over living in the garage. Gotta have motivation to look for Bigfoot. Better not smoke any weed. That's right. Look out, guys. Better not be smoking, smoking all that pot. <laughs> I, you know, I try to motivate people uh, to, um, I guess, I guess, do the things they want to do in life. If all you want to do is smoke weed, then you're already set. But if there's other things you want to do, like have a house and a family, and maybe some luxuries that could only be afforded uh, after a lot of work, you know, make sure nothing's distracting you. That's all I'm saying. Doesn't mean you can't have an occasional cookie or a smoke or weed or whatever. Uh, it's weird though. I, I perceive it as sort of this thing you become addicted to, you know what I mean? So maybe that's part of why I spoke that way about it. I, I don't want people becoming addicted to something that will ultimately change their outcome in life. That's what I tell my own kid. He says, I have a bag. Right, 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 let's go find it. If it was gonna change the outcome of your life, then I would just steer clear of it. Because really ultimately it just costs you money, doesn't it? And it's not giving you what you want, which is maybe life success. You only simp for Snorlax. What? Joshua Glassman. Jonathan Jorge. Joshua Keenan. Welcome back, mister. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and refresh. Look at that Mewtwo right there. He's looking pretty cray cray. All right, there we are. We refreshed. We just helped Mr. Joshua Keenan. Now we have Evan Shea. He says five Rebel Clash, one Ooh Unified Minds. Where even is my Rebel Clash? It's been a while. I think I found it. Yeah, I found it. One, two, three, four, five. Woohoo! One ooh mortified. I have an addiction to unhealthy energy drinks on school days. Yeah, energy drinks are pretty bad. I drink energy drinks too. All right, two Rebel Clash. Mr. is a Pokey motivation coach. That's right. I got to motivate you guys so you can get all the Pokies you want. Sneep. Tosses away the little clippings. Still taking orders? I sure am. Go ahead. We've got Hatram, Grimmel Snarl. Thoughts on Bang Energy Cotton Candy? Uh, no idea. I've never had Bang Energy. Never had Bang Energy. They have funny commercials. Heliolisk. Or he, funny um, sponsorships, if you sh if I would say that. Flapple Gyarados. Oh, man. I think that was five cold packs of Rebel Clash for Mr. Evan Shea. Evan, the Woonified Minds, also cold. I'm sorry, man. That was five strikeouts. So sorry. Peach Mango Bang Goaded. Con candy is interesting. Make sure you do your taxes and you'll get your stimmies. That's right. So, Evan Shea, where did we last have you? Evan, you're over here, I believe. Yeah. Oh, man. Evie picked up... So, this is... Evan picked up this Blaziken. Damn, dude. That's such a great card. Look at this. This came out of Matchless Fighter. Are they fighting him or are they like practicing how to fight? Dude, that's crazy. Loving that card. That card's probably going to go for lots of money. 
we like to think about Pokemon cards in terms of money because money is sort of like uh, closely correlated with the desire for that card. So when it comes to collecting, having an expensive card kind of means having a very rare one or a very desirable one. So that's why we care about money. Connor Gillespie says, one more live custom pack. You got it, Mr. Connor Gillespie. Mr. Picking up a cold pack out of the live box. Okay, we'll go ahead and toss this in here. That card is $300 raw. Damn, crazy. Mr. Derek Withrow says three XY evolutions. Last try tonight, Mr. Much Love. You got it. So I've got one, two. I've got two packs here. And it looks like I need to get more. One moment. One, two, and a three. This is for Mr. Derek Withrow. Is it okay if I share a link? It is not okay to share a link, but also I'm pretty sure that YouTube simply would never allow you to share a link, which is good because people would be doing it all day and it'd turn into spam. spam. I appreciate you asking though. We've got Mr. Polywag. Ooh, Polywag. He's a hot pole. Pack number two. Darkness Energy. And pack number three. Come on. Just Kakuna this time, mister. Let's see if you got any secret rares, though. We haven't seen a flying Pikachu or a surfing Pikachu in a little while. You got Mewtwo. He's pretty cool. And Pikachu. Sorry, Mr. Derek Withrow. Nothing too crazy coming out of those packs. Yu-Gi-Oh's here. That's right. We've got Yu-Gi-Oh. We got a little bit of Dragon Ball. We got NBA Hoops on the way. Um, Pokemon continues to be the number one selling card, though, easily. Although Yu-Gi-Oh's done pretty well. The maximum gold has done well. Derek, where'd I put your bag? You're right. Your bag's right here. I would like to share a computer virus with the chat. Is that cool, mister? <laughs> oh, thanks for asking. I was Normally I would say no, but since you asked kindly, I'm gonna have to say yes. John Gomia, what's up, John? He says, what's Gucci, mister? One vivid voltage and one live custom. One live custom, you got it. Bronzong, oh, mister, that's not the card you were looking for. How about that Vivid Voltage, huh? Mr. John Gumia. Mr. Have you ever been heartbroken? Yeah, somewhat. Uh, you know, I was a little bit of a heartbreaker, but there was one relationship. I didn't want it to end. And, uh, you know, I guess you remember those a little more. I think what, what it was is we weren't very, we weren't very well matched. And, uh, and I wasn't so good at relationships either. But it, it was a relationship that lasted longer. So you, you kind of build up more memories with a person like that. So you don't want to be in that kind of relationship where you stay together a bit longer. And you know you're not really meant to be together. But you stay together anyways because it's convenient or whatever. Good sex or something like that. Um, <laughs> go out and find the one. And don't get too attached to somebody who you're settling for. Because it'll bite you in the in the booty cheeks later. I must be pretty rough to be in a relationship. I'm a pretty demanding person. <laughs> Just think about it. I feel like I smoked eight tons of weed. Mister, you smoked eight tons of weed by the time you were 11? Oh my God. That's a lot of weed, mister. He said smoke weed every day. And then he called me a boomer. Boomer. Whew. Let's see what's next. We just refreshed. I think the wait times are slowing down. In other words, you have a short wait time. Baron says, I've never been good at relationships, but I've played with a lot of booty. I'm so unmotivated right now, says Blaine. Blaine, I know how that feels. 
Sometimes, Blaine, I'm laying on the couch and I'm going, oh, I got so much to do. And sometimes it feels like so much stuff that I, I feel like, what if I just gave up on everything? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like standing on the edge of a ledge and you start thinking, what if you just jumped? You know what I mean? So sometimes I, I feel that. Mister, you are a boomer if you don't do fentanyl. That's right. You don't do fentanyl? Wow. Boomers. Can't wait for everyone who calls other people boomers to one day be old themselves. <laughs> So let's see. I'm not even that old. I'm 32, guys. I'm not like 50. There, there actually are pretty old people out there who are like, yeah, he smoked weed, throw him in jail. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We've got Derek Withrow and then John Gomia. And now we have Patrick Diaz Depaz. What's up, Patrick? He says, hey, mister. Two battle styles, please. I have a bag. Also, a while ago, I bought a spot in the Fossil Custom. Just wondering how that went. Thanks, mister. Mister, I'm assuming... Two battle styles. Let me go find those. Here they are. So, Mr. Patrick Diaz, you said a while ago you bought a spot in the Fossil. And how did it go? Well, I'm assuming you did not pull a Fossil pack out of your booster because your name's not on this list here, Okay. And now let me go find, let me go find your bag, Patrick Diaz. You'd be in here. Robert, Ray, Raymond, Ricardo, Patrick Diaz Depas. All right, here it is. So when we look into your bag, I see that you have two reverse hollows and they're not sleeved up. This is a very good sign that I opened up your fossil custom pack, and that these were the hits. Two hollow cards. Many people pull hollow cards. Some people will pull V cards, GX cards, or full arts, or hyper rares even. And then one very lucky guy will pull an entire first edition fossil booster pack out of his custom booster pack. So here are your two battle style packs. Let's see what you pull out of here. Maybe you get some fire. You got one Spiro. And one Firo and Kingdra. So what's interesting about my custom packs and opening up regular packs from Nintendo is they're actually quite similar. This is all you pulled. Uh, in this case, you do get this Hollow Kingdra, but, you know, he's just another Hollow card. They're not terribly valuable unless it's like a Charizard or Lugia. There we go. We'll sleeve these all up together. So my custom packs are, are quite similar to opening up, uh, let's say, cold packs from Nintendo. The thing is, I don't include like 10 bulk cards that just get bulked anyways. So I put them off to the bulk. Next up, we've got Gregory Morin, who wants two live custom booster packs. Here you go, Mr. Gregory. Earn a Vitality and ah, a lovely Executor. That's an Executor Secret Rare from XY Evolutions. Mr. Gregory Morin. Let me grab your bag. That's kind of cool. All right. That's kind of cool. All right, I've refreshed. There is currently no wait time. Uh, I'm going to call last round. So you can make your last order right now before we close up. And after everyone's made their last order, I'm going to officially end the stream, okay? So now would be the time to make your last order if you're going to make one. All right, picking up. Let's see. Evan Shea, Connor Gillespie, Derek Withrow, John Gomia, Patrick uh, Diaz, Gregory Warren, John Gomia. So John Gomia says, hello again, mister. Just one shining face, please. Last pack for today. And give it a toga kiss. What? Oh, wait. Was it? I think that was a smoochum. I'm sorry. You asked for a toga kiss, and I gave it a smoochum. Oh, mister. What'd you pull? Oh, nice. One last pack for the day, huh? Turns into a full art, shiny, Santa Scorch VMAX. Mister. That's for John Gomia. Looks like the smoochum worked out. Okay, very cool. 
Connor Gillespie says, one last shining fate. Oh no. Connor, if you had ordered even a few seconds earlier, you would have gotten that pack with the Senna Scorch. But who knows? Maybe you'll pull Sweet Coon out of yours. It's possible. Let's see what happens. Okay, you pick up Careless. That's actually still quite decent. That's for Connor Gillespie. Those are some good last packs, in my opinion. Congratulations on that. F Play Media, he says, two live custom boosters, captive hat on Discord with Jimbo and chat. You got it, mister. Two live customs. Or Beetle. And Rapid Strike Scroll of Swirls. That's from F Play Media. I'm going to go ahead and sleeve this up. Let's see. I don't think you have a bag. I'll check, though. He didn't say if he had a bag. Daniel. Dustin. What could be in those customs? Hmm. What are you talking about? Nothing in those. Nothing but sad, sad pokey tears in those customs right now. A date with me, says Snorlax V. What if it said like an all-round paid vacation to TCC's home? <laughs> F play media. Mister, have you been so anxious and sad that you spent the whole lunch without eating and just sit in a toilet stall the whole time? Because I have. Uh, you know, everyone's had really tough times in life. And you, when you're feeling very bad, you typically don't eat. Uh, and you might go to a bathroom stall to get some privacy. So, yeah, I'm sure everyone's had some experience with a really, really, really bad day. You know what I mean? That's right, you, you're going to come over and meet Kitty because I'm not the celebrity here. Kitty's the celebrity. You hear that, Kitty? She's on the couch. All right. Mister, thank you for managing to hold up card business and stream Monster Hunter Rise. Oh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy, isn't it? Alex says, I pooped in the ocean when I was a kid. What are you doing, Alex? The wave took it away. Oh, my God. What have you done, Alex? Dude, that's gross, bro. I pooped in the ocean. Oh, my God. Note to self, don't swim by anyone in the ocean. Snorlax says she has your bag waiting for you. What? What? What are we talking about? All right, I'm going to scroll backwards and make sure nobody was missed. F Play Media, Connor Gillespie, uh, John Gomia, Gregory Morin, Patrick Diaz, John Gomia again. Derek Withrow, Connor Gillespie, Evan Shea, Joshua Keenan. All right, we look good. We look good. So next up, we have Mr. Estuardo Pascual. He says, one custom. Quick! Mr. Estuardo, I'm quickly opening it. So this is the pack. Just ages slash. I'm sorry. It was worth a shot, huh? It was worth a shot. Eddie Petty, Estuardo Pascual. There you go, mister. After Estuardo, we have Mr. Emiliano Orala, who says one champion's path ETB. So, Mr. Emiliano, I don't have a sealed ETB to open for you, but I do have 10 packs. Let me know if that's acceptable before I open them, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can see I do have ten packs there. That's up to you, Mr. Emiliano. Let me know if you'd like me to open these. He says no? Okay, sounds good, mister. Would you like to do... He said Champions Path? Would you like me to do anything else with that order? Uh, or do, would you just like it all refunded? Oops. Oops. 
You know, it'd be funny is if I open it all up and the Charizard's in there. Because <laughs> I did that the other day, didn't I, with the uh, Cosmic Pack, remember? So I'll give you a little bit of time to think about that. If you just want me to refund it, I can refund it. If you want to open a different type of pack, just tell me how many I need to open. And uh, Mr. Justin Conglaton, he says, Phantom's Rage, Yu-Gi-Oh, please, I don't have a bag. Phantom's Rage. Sounds good. And it looks like you're opening up four packs. Is that right? I need to go get more Phantom's Rage. I'll be right back. Phantom's Rage selling out over here. People want that Starlight Zeus. He's nice. Ouch. Okay. Did Emiliano uh, mention anything? What were these priced at? It's either four or five. All right, so you're going to get four of them. I just watched a video. Guy opened 30 packs, didn't pull a single Ghost Rare. Those cards are going to be expensive. Oh, really? Very cool. All right. Blazing Vortex and Phantom Rage are good Yugi says and both have high value pulls. That's right. I did my research. That's why I bought them. You would like eight Unifieds. Sounds good, Mr. Emiliano. Ooh, maybe you'll pull Mewtwo. All right, here goes. We've got Dual Avatar Fist. Virtual World Beast Geo Geo. Ooh. Here's a Raider's Knight. Take a look at that. That's so cool. And no more orders? No, you can still make an order. Go ahead, mister. If you're going to make an order. When people stop ordering, we're wrapping up, though, okay? So that's why I said last order, last call, whatever. Raider's Knight. Very cool. That's all for Mr. Justin Congleton. And uh, now I need a place to put these. I'll put them over here. Let's get your bag. No Zeus in there. Where's that Zeus? Mister said, "Make a order, Space Knights." What? I don't know what you mean by that. Justin Congleton. Oh, you're you're telling Space Knights to order cards. I didn't say that. Space Knights, you do whatever's best for you, okay? That's what you should really do. That's what everyone should do. Now, eight packs of Ooh Woonified Minds. You got it, Emiliano. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Good luck to you. There's a lot of great cards in this set, and maybe, just maybe, you'll pull the Mewtwo Mew, which is the chase card. I bought one a long time ago for $250, and for a short period of time, his price fell hard, and I was like, oh, wow, I wasted my money buying this Mewtwo. But ever since then, the price and the value of that Mewtwo has shot up, man. It went way up. All right. Let's see what you got. Don't forget, Emiliano's one guardian. One guardian, huh? We got young... Did he order... Let me see. He didn't order one Guardian in the original uh, listing. Is it because these don't actually equal up to 120? Is that why? So you've got Aegis slash Young Goose. He's so young. Oh, that's a hit. That's Reverse Hollow Pipichu. Oh, no. He's got a print line in the middle. That's too bad, man. All right. I'm not going to leave him up because he's not a true hit if he can't grade 10. I mean, he might be worth a little bit out of, out of 9. We got Marowak. 
Ryolu. Oh, man, these are tough. Muna. Araquanid. Oh, man. Oh, last pack luck. Slow poke and Psyduck full art. There you go, mister. A little bit of luck on that very last pack. And really, that's not too bad, right? Eight packs, one full art. And that's a cool full art. I like the Psyduck slow poke. Why is there an ant over here? Freaking ants. I hate ants. How many energy drinks that cost a pound? Oh, you're from the UK, huh? He talking in pounds over here. How cute is this? Ditch and splash. <laughs> Thrilling times. All right. Very cute card. Now, Emiliano, let's go find your bag. Where would I have placed Emiliano? I think you're still up here, actually, in the e-box. In the e-girl box. Estuardo says, will you trade my hollows? Uh, I probably will not. You can donate them if you do not want them in your bag. Uh, I used to accept them for a trade for like a pre-grade. I, I don't really think I want to do that either. I just don't have the time for that. So there you go, Mr. Emiliano. Your bag gets a little thicker. Let's go get that Guardians Rising, actually. Here it is, Guardians Rising. Estuardo says, okay, I'll donate. Mr. Estuardo, is that Estuardo Pascual? Wh which person is this? Well, I tell you what, mister, next time you order cards, tell me in the PayPal message, okay? Don't tell me over chat because I don't want to accidentally take someone's cards. I, I think you're probably, you're probably the person who you're going to claim you are. We had one time, we had one guy impersonate other people, and uh, he successfully got me to do some bad things. So I, pr I prefer to receive messages over PayPal. Uh, especially messages that have to do with changing something in someone's bag. Justin Congleton, he got his Yu-Gi-Oh packs, and now we need to refresh. Now we're refreshing. Whoa, something came in. Some kind of order came in. Some kind of Pikachu order. Just give me a second. Let me scroll back down here. Estuardo... We like to make sure no other orders came in. So I'm just making sure nobody was missed. Because that's what I do. All right, good. After Emiliano, we have... Oh, no. After Justin Congleton, we have Connor Gillespie, who says one Opus 4. Opus 4, is that right? Let me just double check. I believe that's correct, because Opus 11 is the expensive one. Yeah. So one Opus 4. Oh, you're experimenting, mister. We have Final Fantasy booster packs that have characters like Cloud in them. Cloud's a real good one if you can pull them. Snip. Good luck, Mr. Connor. And Connor pulls Go-Go. I have no idea who Gogo -Go is. Your back card is... Ooh, that's a legendary. Caius? Dude, that looks pretty cool. I don't know who that is. Very neat. Okay, there we go. And we'll place this to the side. And toss this away. And grab Connor's bag. Connor Gillespie. Dipping his feet into the Final Fantasy packs. I need to get some uh, Final Fantasy cards graded so I can offer them for sale. That's what I need to do. Mr. Emmanuel Panetta. He says, five matchless fighters. You got it, Emmanuel. Mr. Emmanuel. One, two, three, four, five. Thinking of taking tomorrow off. Yeah, my wife and I are trying to figure out when to take time off to move. We got so much work ahead of us. It's going to be so jarring to move from this home into a new home because we've been here for years. And I already know when we leave, my wife is going to be all like sad and teary. She gets attached to stuff really fast. <laughs> 
When we left our first apartment together, she was like so upset. I'm like, it's a nasty apartment. We're out of here. <laughs> All right, Dracozole. I ordered five matchless uh, fighters. He copied me. Alex says, I'll cry. Yeah. It'll be, a, it'll be a really big change for us. For example, we will no longer have city water. We'll be uh, drawing water from a well. That's right. We'll have well water. And then we also will no longer have city sewer. Instead, we'll have something called a septic tank, which is kind of like a mini poop treatment plant under your house. And eventually some sewage guy comes and takes all the poop away. Mister can make new conspiracies about water. Yay! <laughs> A poop bucket? That's right, we'll have a poop bucket. It'll be a very big change in lifestyle. And there won't be many places to go, actually. Uh, unless we drive 30 minutes into their, like, little town. Where are you from? I'm from British Gibraltar. Is one of the smallest countries. Gibraltar. Oh, that's where I'm from, mister. We're from the same country. We should hang out sometime. You are snipping the card wrong. You're supposed to snip it from the middle of the pack. That's true. You get double the cards. I like the way you think. Oh, that's Orala. We want Emmanuel Panetta. Is he in the overflow? I think he is. All right, we just got to find his bag now. Jonathan Morris, Chris Maximovic. I think this is it. At the very end, here it is. All right, mister. Thank you for returning and opening up some more cards. Pronounce it like this. Gibra. Gibraltar. That's where I live, mister. We're going to move out there. We're not going to have... Uh, we're not going to have that many neighbors. We've been living in this condo for so long... And we're literally just surrounded by people because that's how a condo complex is. There's people everywhere. You look out your window, you see people walking. Now, this will be very different. We'll have a house, and it'll, there's like one neighbor to the side and another neighbor to the other side. But uh, a lot of people don't live in Lake of the Ozarks because it's too remote. So they have it as like a vacation home or a second home. And so I don't think we'll see our neighbors all the time. I'm not sure if we will. But even then, it's, that's just... Two, two families on the left and right to us, as opposed to what we have here, where it's like every condo unit is at least four, four families, right, or four people. So we'll go from feeling like we're surrounded by too many people to kind of like just being out in the middle of nowhere with just two neighbors. Very spread out. How come American accent? Oh, uh, I've learned the American accent. I'm actually British. I'm British, mate. Jack Gray says, holy heck, are these expensive? But I've never opened this set before. One Shining Legends for Jack Gray. You got it, Jack Gray. Hey, maybe this will be your lucky night. It's Tuesday, isn't it? See, I'm British. I'm going to head off to the pub after this. Jack Gray, good luck. Nah, I'm sorry, Jack Gray. Electrode and Palkio. So that's for Jack Gray. He has mental illness. See, I'm totally British. I'm British. Pubs are canceled. Oh, no. That's right. I'm going to have some fish and chips. And, and later I'll have some eels and jelly. Very good. I probably would eat eels and jelly. If I was in, uh, if I was in London or whatever. All right, there you go, Mr. Jack. Sorry about that. No crazy pulls. Michael Higman is next. He says, hey, mister, it's been a while. Hope all is well. He wants three live customs and five shiny fakes. All right, three live customs for Mr. Michael Higman. Hello, Michael. Pack number one. Oh, what's this? PSA 10, number 197. Huh, what could that be? Could it be this very fancy Dragapult VMAX? Mister! All right, this card, I believe, has moved up in value to like $400 or something, I think. 
I didn't I didn't put him in there for that much, but yep, he's popular. Dragapult V Max Hyper Rare for Mr. Michael Heegman. Did you expect that, Michael? All right. Got your name on the back of it now. Just needs to be shipped. It says 421 right there. That might have been the last price that I looked up on this card. Whew. Sometimes there's a hot pull in the box. Now that was one pack. He's got two more packs. You pull a hollow ente and remoraid. Oh, I love this music that's playing. He also wants five Shining Fates. We can make that happen. Five Shiny Fates. One, two, three, four, and a five. Here it goes. One, two, three, four, and a five. Awesome. I'm surprised more people don't open Shining Face. This is a great set because it gives you a chance for the Charizard. Galarian, Obstacoon, and Al Creamy. Very nice. This is a set with a very high pull rate, and it gives you a chance for a Charizard. That makes it a pretty solid thing to be opening. Here's Greedent. All right, we got Greedent. Uh, Spinarak. We've got Frost Moth. There are some people talking to themselves in chat. What do you mean? What are you talking about? And a new card. Dragapult. More Peko Dragapult, mister. That was a great round of five packs. I feel a lot. I feel like a lot of the Shiny V and Pokemon are really weak compared with Hidden Fates. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I think th I think that they both have strengths and weaknesses, but I see. I think I see what you mean. Hidden Fates has really strong pulls, like Espeon, Umbreon, Cynthia. On the other hand, it's costing more than uh, Shining Legends. The other thing is, the other thing I would say is that Shining Legends has pulls like Skyla, Charizard VMAX, Suicune's pretty cool. I think Dragapult actually does pretty well. Um, Infernape's in here. I th uh, not Infernape, I'm sorry. Uh, what's his name? I pull him like all the time. How's his name blanking? Rillaboom. Rillaboom's in here. I think Rillaboom's pretty decent. Sir Fetched, he's cool. Shiny Sir Fetched. Yeah, there's, there's pulls in here as well. But I see what you're saying. They're not like Evolutions. But again, they're, they're cheaper... And let me point this out. You know, I don't think that these packs are going to get any cheaper. This will probably be the cheapest point in their existence for a while. And then at some point, they're just going to get expensive. You know what I mean? Nadine. Noah. Nectaria. Nicole. Michael Heekman, we found your bag. Welcome back, Mr. Michael. How's it going? How's it been? Michael Higman returns, and he's ready to open all the pokey. Mister, I went to a restaurant under British people there. I went to the bathroom, and there was puke in the sink because they drank alcohol and got drunk. Oh, mister. That's called a free meal, mister, if you're real hungry. I just bought a bunch of the Shining Hidden Tins. Whew. Raymond Smith says five Opus 4 Cloud Packs. Oh, very good. Do I have five? I don't know if I have five. I've got three of them. I might have to open another box. Yes, I do. Fresh box of the cloud cards. So this is for Raymond Smith, who maybe just realized that he could pull a cloud. Give me a second. I got to get this all open. That's five. I'll bring some to the top. Here. 
Here are the much more expensive Tifa packs, by the way. Yeah, there's Tifa packs in there. Okay, good luck to Raymond Smith. Raymond says he has a bag. Hello, Mat Mateo. What's up, man? Sleep. One, two, three, four, and a five. I noticed we don't get as many people begging for codes these days. It used to be constant in the past. Oh, what'd you get? Is this going to be Cloud? A Beatrix. All right, you pull Beatrix Rare. Very nice. So that's your Hollow and Shadow, huh? Very nice. Whew. When you see that dark background, a lot of the times it's a good character card. Next up, we've got Esther. Is it Esther or Eshtar? Eshtar Soldier. And Sarah. It's Sarah. She's a hero. He says, well, hello there. What's up, Marquez? How's it going, man? Marquez joins us much later. Wait, have you been here the whole time? What's this? Oh, that's that Caius card that we had earlier, and you got the legendary version of the Hollow. Very nice. And there's Lightning. Oh, mister, those are some hot pulls right there. We're going to have to give them separate sleeves. So here's Lightning, and she's also legendary. So you pulled two legendaries in a row, and one of them's Hollow. All right, next pack. Uh, Zach. <laughs> what? What the hell is this? Okay. Zach and the set, sir. And what do we have here? Wedge. Wedge and Scion. Scion? Cian? Ian? There we go. So I'll toss the book to the side and throw the packs away and find Mr. Raymond's bag now. Mr. Raymond, where am I going to find you? Let's see if you're in the R box. Raymond, can you give me some information about your bag? Like, how old is your bag? Is it, like, super old, or is it recent? Robin, Ryan, Robert, Virgilio. Yeah, give me an idea, Rob, uh, Mr. Raymond. How old is that bag? Robert Anthony, Ramsey, President Agnew, Richard Brown, RPG, Purebred, Red Express... Reed, Ruse, Papa Gorgio, Raul, Papa's in the house, Riley Hill, Paul, Ruby Rod, and some heavy custom cards in the back. So Raymond Smith, I don't see a bag for you. I'm going to create a new bag. And what you need to do is give me some information on your other bag. It's probably a very old one. My brain was telling me that it could be very old. That's actually the whole reason why I was asking. Actually, wait a second. Did we check down here already? I'm trying to remember. Did we check down here? Here we go. Raymond Smith. Ah, there we go. Raymond Smith, I think something about your name made me think you had a really old bag. Found his bag. He's not super old. He's right here. And we're going to put you up in the R box up top. Very nice, Mr. Well, I think you hit a nice pull in that cloud pack. Next up, we have Mr. Ricardo Lopez, who wants five matchless fighter packs. Thank you, Mr. I have two bags. Two of them. One, two, three, four, five. Two bags. Don't forget to tell, tell me that before we ship you, okay? So if I uh, if you request shipping, tell me in your your shipping request that you got two. All right, let's see what you got. Here's Intellion, Hatterene, Alex. Man, Alex is ready for some free pokies. <gasps> What'd you pull? Ah, oh, that's the Karen Full Art. It's a Karen. Check that out, mister. Damn, Karen's looking kind of hot. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe, maybe I'll go back on the whole Karen meme. I think Karen's okay now. I think I'm simping for Karen now. Actually, if you want to see something fun, um, let me show you guys something. Just take me a minute to find it. Should be right here, actually. It 
Does Karen know about Ligma? I bet she doesn't. Okay, it's not in this box. Let me try uh, the other box. Not this one. Oop, there goes my controller. Let me try this one. All right, give me a second. Ah, here we are. That's Karen's Tyranitar, which means she's an old character. She's been around for a while. Is she one of the Elite Four? I bet she's an Elite Four. Oof. Man, that's heavy. All right, there we go. I don't actually know. Who the heck is Karen? She's a gym leader or something? What's my favorite thing to open on stream? Probably XY Evolution. Got this a long time ago. For $155. What do you think it goes for now? Let's update it. What if we can even find it? So this would be under the Versus series, and it's Karen's Tyranitar. The cheapest one is now four hundred and thirty dollars. Wow. So let me update that real fast. Did that say four thirty or four forty? Four thirty. So we will say four thirty on four one. That's not bad. I started at $155, and today I could try to sell it for about $430. Huh? That's not so bad. And I've been holding it for a while, so it would be kind of like investing. Uh, but, you know, I think Bitcoin actually outperformed this. So if you had done nothing but own Bitcoin, it would have gone up faster. Bitcoin? Man, I wish it'd go up now. Come on, Bitcoin. Make me some money. All right, let's see. This was for Ricardo Lopez. He says he has two bags. Let's go find Mr. Ricardo's bags, or at least one of them. Ricardo, Ryan, Robin, Ryan, Robert, Regilio. Where's Mr. Ricardo? Not there. Let's check down here. Woohoo! Patrick, Robert, Robert, Ray Perez, Ricardo Lopez. Here it is. Wow, nice pull, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need a drink or something. Here, let me mute. I got to cough real fast. All right. <clears throat> I'm refreshing, and we'll see if we are done for the night. The night crawls on, man, later and later. Okay, here we are. So, after Raymond Smith, we have Ricardo Lopez and then Emiliano who says, please send top card to CGC with the subgrades. You got it, Mr. Emiliano. Your top card. Let's see what it is. That's Dradigon, Grapplocked. Minuar, you got a lot of hollows in here. So I'm going to say it's actually this off-center Slowpoke Psyduck. He's your best card right now, in my opinion. Let's get him graded. He's fairly cute, and even as a nine, he should go for a decent little chunk of money. Because he's so cute. That's right, even PSA 9 sell. So CGC 9 sell too. There you go, Mr. Emiliano.
Orala C1 plus. Sweet! Snorlax just need the Eevees and others aren't. One last refresh and then I'm gonna call, uh, I'm gonna put a stop to orders. All right, so no more orders, guys. Do not put in any more orders. We're all done for the night. We're all done for the night. How nice is that? Yep, we're all caught up. So now I'm gonna go take a look at the, I'm gonna go take a look at the giveaway channel and see if anyone's placed a number in there. Give me a minute. All right, the daily giveaway. Oh, there's so many people. Look at all these guys. Let me go ahead and clone this channel. And I'm gonna delete, oh, wait, hold on. What am I doing? Oh, I didn't need to clone it. All right, well, let me go ahead and hide the one that's already filled. All right, so the daily giveaway channel is locked down. Let's go get our number generator. And now we're gonna find out who the winner is. Boop. That's 61, 61. All right. Let's find out who guessed 61 or close to it or beneath it. So 60, 59, 58. Johnny P. Mr. Johnny P guessed 58, which makes him the winner tonight. All right, let's see if Johnny P pulls anything. Good luck, Mr. Johnny. Oh, what's this? That's a hit. CGC 9, Sword and Shield, 050. What do you know? It's so easy. This is for Mr. Johnny P. Congratulations on your new Charizard. Oops, let me throw this away. Where are my protective sleeves at? There they are. Look at that. It's so easy. He picked up CGC 9 Charizard for free. I think that's Johnny Pyres, right? I'm pretty sure it is. Actually, let me just double check. Let me just double check. Johnny Pyres. All right, cool. Just making sure. <laughs> I write the wrong name on the back. That would mess everything up. Congratulations, Johnny. That's going to be the end of the live stream. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Don't forget to subscribe, everyone.